Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, Bapak. Apakah suara saya terdengar? Yes, Salma. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you very much, Salma. Welcome, participants. Welcome, Dr. Aswan, Dr. Rini. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good, Good morning, Dr. Aswan, Dr. Abu Kintani. Hello. Good Thank morning. Thank you. Good morning. Maraming, maraming salamat po mm -hmm. for attending. Oh, yes. <laughs> You're yes, always no problem. <laughs> okay, everyone, we're going to start the opening ceremony at 8.30 a.m. We still have around five minutes to start, so please enjoy and relax. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs>
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Salma Hanifa Yusrizal. It is such an honor for me to be your master of ceremony. In this beautiful morning, on Monday, 14th of December, 2020, in the opening ceremony of the International Student Body Scriptural Summit 2020, held by Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia, supported by Association of Southeast Asian Teacher Education Network. First of all, I would like to welcome the distinguished rector of Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia, Professor Dr. M. Soleudin MPD MA, the distinguished vice rector of Academic and Student Affairs of Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia, Professor Dr. Didi Sukyadi MA, the Honorable Secretariat of the Association of Southeast Asian Teacher Education Network, Mr. John Carlo Ramos, the Honorable Executive Director of ASTEN, Teacher Education Quality Assurance Agency, Professor Fuad Abdul Hamid, PhD, the Distinguished Head of the Directorate of International Affairs of Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia, Dr. Ahmad Bukhari Muslim, the Distinguished Head of the International Program Division of the Directorate of International Affairs, Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia, Dr. Mia Nafisa. The Honorable Chief Executive of International Students Body Spiritual Summit 2020, Mr. Chef Ubat Abdullah MPD. The Honorable Speakers, the Honorable Staff of the Directorate of International Affairs, Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia, and last but not least, to all beloved participants of the International Student Body Spiritual Summit 2020. Before we begin, let me read some of the regulation for all the audience to follow during this opening ceremony. First, please to keep your microphone muted during the ceremony. Second, the audience are not allowed to leave the room during the ceremony. And last but not least, for the audience who have any trouble connection and automatically sign up from the room, you may return to the room with the same link that has been shared. All right, ladies and gentlemen, in this beautiful morning, we have several items of our agenda. So please allow me to read several sequences of our agenda. First, the opening. Second, the sing singing the national anthem of Indonesia, Indonesia Raya. Third, the report speech from the Honorable Chief Executive of International Student Body Spiritual Summit 2020. Fourth, the welcoming speech and officially launch the International Student Body Spiritual Summit 2020 by the Honorable Head of the International Program Division of the Directorate of International Universitas Medica Indonesia. Now everyone, please join me to sing the national anthem of Indonesia, Indonesia Raya. Everybody, please turn on the camera.
health, whatever they do, let us get to our next agenda. The report speech to be delivered by the distinguished Chief Executive of International Student Body Spiritual Summit 2020, Mr. Chet Ubat Abdullah MKD. To Mr. Abdullah, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Salma, today's Master of Ceremony. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A very good morning to you all, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Well, first of all, allow me to also greet you in traditional Sundanese greeting. So every time I say Sampurasun, I would like you to respond to me by saying Rampes. So once again, every time somebody is saying Sampurasun, Please say rampes. So everybody, please kindly turn on your camera, turn, turn on your microphone, I mean. All right, let's do this. Sampurasun. Rampes. Great, let's give it up for everybody. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, the Honorable Rector and Vice Rector of Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia, the, the Honorable Representatives from ASTEN and also APCA Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia, the Honorable Director, Division Head, and also yeah, Division Head and also Director of International Affairs, Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia, the, un the Honorable Representatives from each participating university of, or institutions, and also my dearest students from Sahabat Dia. A very good morning to you all, and welcome to UP International Student Bodies Virtual Summit 2020. This program is conducted by the bodies of DIA UP, Director of International Affairs Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia, which aims to be an academic forum for international student bodies around Southeast Asia to exchange ideas and knowledge so that international students within that universities will have access and facilities and also services from the bodies. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to deliver several main, several points of report as follow. First, in total, there are 71 participants of this event, deriving from five different countries, Indonesia, Malaysia, Vietnam, the Philippines, and also Taiwan, and comprising 11 different universities. Today, we are going to have a listen to three different speeches highlighting the important roles of student ambassadors. So thank you so much for all the speakers, Bapak Ahmad Bukhari uh, and also Dr. Maria and also Shirley. Thank you so much for coming despite the pandemic. And tomorrow we will have, to, we will have sharing sessions of best practices of international bodies from different universities. First, we have Muhammad Nur Azam bin Ghazali from UPSI Malaysia, and we also we also have Lord Elvin Zamora from UIC University of Immaculate Conception, the Philippines. We have also Munyente Tutui. I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name from VNUHCM Vietnam, Arista from Universitas Ahmad Dahlan in Indonesia, Alfat from the Hosting University Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia. Monita from UNSIA, Muti from Telkom University, Indonesia, Afghan Lili, UP graduate who is, who is currently studying at NQU University, Taiwan. And also we have from UITM, and also Nico John Samson from PNU, the Philippines. I would like also to, I would like also to thank Dr. Rene Barbiera from UIC. Thank you so much for participating in this event. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this event would not be possible without the hard work of the student bodies as the organizing committee of this event. So please uh, join me in giving the biggest appreciation for the committee from UP, I'm sorry, from DIA UP International Student Bodies, or as we call it, the Havasia. On behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to apologize for any inconvenience. So this is the end of my report. Thank you so much. Have a great summit and have a fruitful discussion. Thank you once again. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you very much for the speech, Mr. Ratullah. Moving to the fourth item of our agenda, I would like to invite 
the Honorable Head of the International Program Division of the Directorate of International Affairs Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia, Dr. Mia Nafisa, to deliver her speech and officially to launch the International Student Bodies Virtual Summit 2020. To Dr. Nafisa, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Salma. So, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everyone. So, uh, good morning, honorable guests, the representative of ASTEM, Mr. John Carlo Ramos, the representative of each university who are invited here, the honorable speakers, and of course, all the participants. Welcome. It is a great pleasure and my privilege to welcome you here on the first Southeast Asia International Student Body Virtual Summit 2020. In this beautiful morning, it is such refreshing to see these fresh faces of the youth, even if it is seen virtually. Unfortunately, the director of Universitas Indonesia sent his warmest regards because uh, and sincerely apology and his sincerely apology for not being able to welcome you personally. However, this summit will be going on. Yeah? This program is an initiative of Directorate for International Affairs, or DIA, Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia, supported by ASTEN, the Association of Southeast Asian Teacher Education Network. Again, before moving on, I also would like to extend my sincere appreciation to all the committee and everyone who have made this summit possible. Director of International Affairs believes that international student body volunteers are an integral part of the university's internationalization. The international student body is inevitable in this globalizing cross-cultural world. Despite the borderless society, international students' mobility would definitely be made easier with ones who can introduce and integrate them within the local cultures so that they survive the new academic and cultural environment. We understand that maintaining an intercultural relationship is often challenging, and this time of pandemic indeed present a lot more challenges than it has ever been. Therefore, it is only quite fitting and timing that we should share, exchange ideas, and collaborate about how bodies could navigate their roles in these apparently more digital platforms in the future in order to promote effective volunteer-based service. We are honored to have uh, Bapak Ahmad Bukhari Muslim, PhD, Ibu Maria Elvira A. Aswan, PhD, and Ms. Shirley Tampilisan with us today. All three are esteemed speakers whose talk I believe will give us insights on this issue. And tomorrow, you guys are the most eligible people who know what to do because you are the digital natives, so you know better than me. <laughs> Just like our first president of Indonesia, Insinyur Sukarno, famously said, Beri aku sepuluh pemuda, niscaya akan kuguncangkan dunia. Oh, give me ten young people, for sure, I'll shake the world. You will shake the world to embrace and explore the new age of digital intercultural friendship. So, everyone, please stay focused, be prepared to be excited and inspired. To close this remark, on behalf of Rector of Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia, allow me to open the summit officially. So everyone, I wish you a very fruitful discussion, but most importantly, build friendship and enjoy your time. Once again, thank you very much and have a great summit. Thank you very much, Dr. Napisa, for the speech and to officially launch the International Student Studies Virtual Summit 2020. And everyone, now please join me to watch the video profile of Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia. Please enjoy. Sí, no. 
1954 in Bandung City as Teachers Education College or PTPG by the former Ministry of Education, Mr. Muhammad Yamin. PTPG was established as a reflection of the Indonesian history of striving for independence and as the next step to uplift the nation by education as an important part of the independence. In its journey, Bandung PTPG underwent several changes. At first, the institution was integrated as a part of Pajajaran University, then amended into Institute of Teacher Education and Educational Sciences, or IKIP, and finally re-established as Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia, or UPI. The Bumi Siliwangi Building, formerly known as Villa Isola, is the university's main building, as well as its icon. Villa Isola, an Art Deco building that currently serves as the Rectorate building, is now inaugurated as one of the nation's cultural heritage buildings. UPI's primary mission is to become a leading and outstanding university. Thereby, UPI is committed to promote academic excellence and nurture innovation and scholarly development in order to be a leading pioneer in the field of education. Welcome to Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia. As one of the few universities with the status of state-owned legal entities, UPI has the autonomy to manage itself independently, both in academic and non-academic aspects. By having scientific, educative, and religious as its motto, UPI strives to balance the three concepts all in one harmony. Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia is made up of eight faculties which offer courses in a wide variety of subjects and concentrations. Faculty of Educational Sciences, Faculty of Social Science Education, Faculty of Language and Literature Education, Faculty of Mathematics and Science Education Faculty of Technology and Vocational Education Faculty of Sports and Health Science Education Faculty of Economics and Business Education Faculty of Art and Design Education and UPI also offers postgraduate programs at the School of Postgraduate, including various research opportunities and civic services at the Center for Research and Community Services. Additionally, UPI also offers non-educational courses as a mandate extension of the government to nurture future graduates of non-educational programs. UPI, in its academic implementation, is committed to apply cross-fertilization approach between educational and non-educational programs to mutually strengthen both of the areas. In maintaining a consistent level of satisfying quality, UPI is devoted to improve the quality of education services through systematic efforts and increase the number of highly accredited study programs. Part of the main campus in Bandung, UPI is strengthened by six branch campuses which located in several locations. UPI Bumi Siliwangi, UPI Cibiru, UPI Tasikmalaya, UPI Purwakarta, UPI Sumedang, and UPI Serang. The university is home to more than 3,000 students and hundreds of international students with 1,300 experienced academic staff, dozens of visiting professors, and 700 non-academic staff. UPI offered various programs, 
ranging from foundation to postgraduate level and the teaching is conducted both in Bahasa Indonesia and English. In achieving an international standard and highly accountable university, UPI is providing a full range of venues and facilities in support of the academic activities, include modern teaching venues, advanced supporting facilities such as online management, e-learning, and e-library. Through the continuously development, UPI strives to maintain a pleasant, safe and sustainable campus for the university community. In fostering student activities, UPI optimizes the empowerment of student activity unit namely UKM or Unit Kegiatan Mahasiswa and the engagement of students in various activities related to their talents, interest, and intellectual. Thus, it is not surprising if UPI students got many achievements at the national and international level. As the Center of the Science and Education Practices Development, UPI has laboratory schools range from early childhood education to high school level located at the main campus and the branch campuses. In supporting the national education preservation and fostering a brighter future of education, UPI built the Museum of National Education expected to be sources of learning, research, educative leisure for the public, particularly for students of all levels. Finally, UPI has an overriding responsibility for ensuring the quality of the human resources to generate a positive impact on this world in challenging the present to create a better future. From the dazzling land of Bumi Siliwangi, welcome to Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia, the leading and outstanding university. Thank you everyone for watching with full of attention. I hope everyone enjoyed. Now, we have come to the end of the International Student Values Virtual Summit 2020 opening ceremony. But before we close the opening ceremony, I would like to ask everyone to turn on the camera because we're gonna have the photo session first. And also I would like to invite Mr. Abdul and also Dr. Rafisa to join me in the stage to take a picture together. Uh, the host, can you help me to take the picture? Yes. Yeah. <laughs>
we're going to have three times uh, photo session because there is three uh, room. So the first room is ready. Everyone, please turn on the camera and smile. Rahma, ready? On my count? Okay. One, two, three. Then, Rahma, uh, are do we need to take another picture? Okay, for it. Are we ready for the second slide? Okay. Once again, everyone, smile. One, two, three. Thank you. Again, again, everyone. <laughs> One, two, three. And this is this is gonna be the last one for the third slide. Slide. Okay. Am I ready for the third slide? <laughs> okay, for the third slide. One, two, three. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Hamza and Mr. Abdul, and thank you so much, everyone. All right. Now, I would like to invite Jaru Rafi Ismail as our moderator for today's main program. To Jalu, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Salma. Uh, good morning, everyone. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Jalu Rafi Ismail, and I'm going to be your moderator for today's program. All right. Before we start, just like what the head of this event had been uh, doing, I'd like to ask you to, to uh, do a Sunni discreeting. So what, when I uh, say Salpurasun, you say Rampes. Once again, when I say Salpurasun, you say Rampes. Okay? Uh, turn on your video and also a microphone. Salpurasun. Rampes. Thank you very much. Okay. For today's program, we're going to have a speaker who will deliver two different topics related to international advice. The first speaker, we have Dr. Ahmad Buhari Muslim. The second speaker, we have Dr. Maria Elvira A. Asuar. And the third speaker, we have Ms. Shirley Tankinisa. Before, before we begin, let me read some of the regulations for all of the participants to follow during the presentations. First, please. Keep your microphone muted during the presentation. Second, the participants are allowed to leave the room during the presentation. And third, for any participants who have any trouble connection and automatically sign out from the room, you may return to the room with the same link which already shared. And four, last but not least, to any participants who would like to ask a question, we're gonna have the Q&A session by the end of each presentation. All right. As we know that, as student ambassadors, we know that it's pure. There is a recruitment event for being a student body. But sometimes the student ambassadors do not directly in touch with that program. Does it make you question yourself in a working as student ambassador? To answer that question, we're going to invite Dr. Ahmad Bukhari Muslim to speak on the topic of the role of student ambassadors in the international recruitment pipeline. But first, let me introduce Dr. Ahmad Bukhari Muslim. Dr. Muslim is the head of the Directorate of the International Affairs in Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia, and also one of the lecturer in the Department of English Education and Literature, Faculty of Language and Literature Education in Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia. Okay, without any further ado, Please join me in giving warmest welcome to Dr. Muslim. Dr. Muslim, the floor is yours. Thank you, Jalu. Uh, the host, can I, uh, may I share my slide? Can you stop your sharing, please? Thank you. Of course, sir. We are trying to uh, open your PowerPoint. 
your slide. I can, I can, I can share from here. No. Can you see my slide? Yes. yes. All right, thank you. Thank you, moderators. And good morning, everyone. Mabuhai and Selamat Pagi. First of all, I'd like to welcome, extend my warmest welcome to Dr. Rainey from UIC Philippines, Dr. Maria Aswan from PNU, and also Mr. Kahlo from the ASTEN Secretariat. Dr. Fidi, Dr. Nia, and uh, Ms. Uh, Ubad and also all the organizing committee, thank you for organizing and making this program successful. And also welcome to all participants from all the ASEAN countries here. We have from Philippines, from Indonesia, of course, from Malaysia, from Thailand, from Vietnam, and also the ASEAN Plus from Taiwan, from National Timor University. I hope that they are also joining here with us. As the committee and the moderator has assigned me, my topic is about the role of student ambassador in supporting university internationalization. I hope that I can share with you some important ideas on how important it is for you as student ambassador in supporting our university internationalization program. As you know that this issue now has become a very important issue. Now all universities in the world are focusing their attention on how to have to improve and to develop you know, international partnership, international cooperation and everything related to international relations. So this is my coverage. I'm going to talk about the changing landscape of internationalization at high education institutions. So I'm talking about English as a lingua franca in Asia and also in ASEAN, of course. And also I'm talking a bit about the requirement for learning in the 21st century. I'm talking about forces, which uh, I'm sure that this is not something very new to us because we have heard and read this issue very much. And also I'm uh, looking at how sort of ambassador uh, in relation to international admission and the existence and also maybe the well-being of international students. And from that, we can see how we can move forward uh, to you know, support our university internationalizations. All right, let's get started. So if we read literature, for example, we'll see, and also maybe based on our you know, observations and our reading, we'll see that when we talk about international student, international uh, talents, the focus so far in this decade, it's always the flowing is to develop countries, from developing countries to develop countries. So if you talk about, for example, where I'm going to study overseas, and the answer is always, I'll be studying in North America, I'll be studying in Western Europe, I'll be studying in US, in Canada in UK, in Germany, in France, for example, in Australia, in Japan. And this makes sense because these uh, universities in these countries, uh, they have good quality and also they have a good marketing strategy. And also maybe we have a sense of, you know, uh, colonial proximity because these countries in Western Europe, for example, uh, they used to have large colonies in in Africa, in Asia, in all parts of the world. So this kind of uh, psychological connection may still work when the people from these developing countries decide to go and study overseas. But in the recent years, I think maybe in the last, especially in the last maybe three or five years, this trend has changed significantly. So now, if you look at, for example, the literature says, as Peters in, in his study says, for example, now the United States, the Northern America has a crisis in internationalization. For example, in the recent year, maybe this year or last year, for example, we have the issue, the increasing issue of authoritarian national populism. You know, during the Trump administration, for example, the issue of race, for example, we know, for example, when the issue of the 
Black Lives Matters, for example. And this also for some of the, you know, the sentiment to uh, migrants, the visitors, for example, when the administration even built a long fence dividing U.S. and Mexico, for example. So this also influences the flow of international students coming to the United States, to the North America. Another issue is also coming from European countries. This also in recent years, maybe in the last three or two years, for example, we have witnessed the increasing anti-immigrant sentiments, racism, and also white supremacy in these European countries, for example, with the exit, the Brexit, for example, the exit of British uh, or UK from the European Union, for example. This may have changed significantly the flow of international students coming to these developed countries. So now international students thinking of studying in these European countries, in these North American countries, they will think of this crisis and challenges and they may make up their minds, they may change their mind and then think of an alternative solution, an alternative destination to pursue their study overseas. And so from now on, we do not see any more one-way direction from developing countries to developed countries, from Asia to North America, from Asia to Western European countries only. Now, we see that the flow, the landscape of international students is going two ways. So we see that students, yes, still from developing countries, students still go to these developed countries to pursue their education. But on the other hand, students from these developed countries also, they think of finding an, an alternative way, destination to study overseas. And of course, they look at the countries outside these developed countries. So they see Asia, they see, for example, Indonesia, they see Philippines in ASEAN, Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam, or Taiwan, or other countries in Asia. So this uh, changing landscape is a good news for us in developing countries in Indonesia, in uh, Malaysia, in Philippines, in Thailand, for example, that now we have wider opportunity the opportunity is now opening more widely. And we need to realize this, that now we have the opportunity to have more and more incoming and inbound, inbound students coming to our universities and also to our country. So Asia now as the center of uh, students, you know, the landscape of students. So if you talk about Asia, we may see as China, for example, some developed countries in Asia, we look at maybe, for example, Japan or South Korea or some countries in the Middle East or India, for example. But of course, when we talk about Asia, ASEAN also, uh, we cannot escape that one, yes. So we cannot, you know, ignore the existence of ASEAN countries in welcoming this new SIF in the landscape of international students. And when we talk about ASEAN now also, these countries around ASEAN, we have ASEAN Plus, we have ASEAN with China, with Japan, with uh, South Korea, with Taiwan, and with other countries in Asia. So this is the first phenomenon that we need to pay attention, we need to consider, and we need to look at when we talk about the flow of international students, the flow of international talents that now are, you know, growing. So now we see that the both sides from developed and developed countries now are mutually important. So we see the importance of cooperation and partnership with both a developing and developed countries. But, and also when we talk about, for example, when we talk about geographical proximity, for example, when you talk about affordability, the, uh, when we think of cost that we may, it may incur, incur when we go overseas, when we study overseas, for example. So this uh, geographical proximity, this geographical closeness is also another influential important factor when students uh, think of pursuing degrees overseas. So once again, it, ASEAN as a closely related 
uh, region, I think it's important for us that we think of, you know, uh, extending partnership with our neighboring countries in ASEAN. But again, as I mentioned earlier, this international partnership is inescapable from the important the significance means of international communication, which is English. So now in ASEAN, for example, in Asia, we know that we are not net speaker of English, although some countries in ASEAN, for example, the Philippine, Philippine has English as the second language, for example, or in Malaysia, for example, but it is still not our native language. So we, in ASEAN, we speak our own national languages as our first uh, or mother tongue. In Indonesia, we speak Indonesian, for example. In Malaysia, the people speak Malay, for example. In the Philippines, the people, for example, speak uh, the Tagalog or other varieties. And also in Thailand, for example, they speak Thai. But this international partnership requires a common, a shared common ground, a shared language, which enable us to understand each other. So in Asia, for example, we still use English as our lingua franca. We speak to people in China, in Japan, in South Korea, in India, in Middle East countries, for example, in Saudi Arabia. We use English within our own accent, for example. We know, for example, how the Filipino, when they speak English, we know how the Thai, when they speak English, we recognize how the Singaporean, when they speak English, for example. And also Indonesians. So within our accents, within our you know, style of English, we manage to understand and to use English as what we are doing today within this international virtual uh, student ambassador or student's body uh, symposium or summit, for example, we use English as our lingua franca. So with this world English, we will find out, for example, now in Asia, we have Chinese English, we have Indian English, we have Singapore English, for example. And of course, we, it, it is possible that we will have ASEAN English, for example, we have Thai English, uh, Filipino English, or Malaysian English, Indonesian English, or just now the moderator and also uh, the, uh, the organizing committee mentioned the Sundanese English maybe. For information, Sundanese is a local vernacular, a local ethnicity in Western Japa province of Indonesia, like in Bandung. So it's Sundanese, not Sunday, the ice cream, that I think everyone is more familiar with Sunday than Sundanese. So the role of English is also important. So that's why I think as, as students body, as international student body, I think this requirement for English competence is really necessary when we think of uh, international partnership, when we think of international cooperation, when we think of international or global uh, sharing between uh, when we... Franca, then we have some program which are based on English. So we have English mediated internationalization at our university, for example. I believe that now, for example, universities in ASEAN, in Asia, for example, we have international classes, for example. I know that in ASEAN, for example, under the Southeast Asia Minister of Education, so for example, we have C teacher program, Southeast Asia teacher, this is for educational majors. For non-education, we have CTVET, for example. We also have, for example, AIMS under also Samuel Raihead, uh, ASEAN International Mobility for Students, for example. And, and with the ASEAN Plus, this A in AIM now has changed from ASEAN into Asian because countries out of ASEAN also want to join this exchange program. So now the AIMS also accommodate students from Japan, from South Korea, and also from other ASEAN countries, maybe including Taiwan, including China. So also we have summer programs. Yes, and all are connected in English. Uh, yes, for example, at our university here in Bandung at UPI, we have our annual summer program, which is usually held in uh, uh, July or August offline. And because of the 
COVID-19, this year, 2020, we have also virtual summer program like what we are doing today, virtual international uh, student body uh, summit program. Yes, so we may also have other program, for example, international student symposiums. I know, for example, I think uh, Mr. Fidi Sukmadi and also my colleague here at our international office, we organize, for example, student symposium with some universities from Malaysia. We uh, organize, I think, maybe in the last two years with students from UITM from Malaysia, from UPSI from Malaysia. And also, of course, we want to extend this student symposium with other universities from other Asian countries, from the Philippines, from UIC, from, for example, BNU, from National Kimo University, and from other universities in Thailand, for example. And another example is, I think this one is uh, the program, I think, initiated by UIC. I think Dr. Rene is here. So he, the university, organizes ASEAN, is it ASEAN virtual game, Dr. Rene? So where students can participate in this program. So, and yes, it yes. is because of the COVID-19 pandemic, all the programs for now are conducted virtually. So this is the significance of English as a lingua franca in Asia and also in ASEAN, which is important in supporting our endeavors to support and to increase internationalization at our higher education in now, let me, uh, in brief, talk about uh, the importance of uh, the learning skills which is required in the 21st century now we are living. People call this a 21st century or maybe the 4.0 century, yes? We, I think we have heard, often heard this term of four Cs, which is communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and also creativity that our students, the millennial learners, as Dr. Nia mentioned in the opening, the digital native. So we see the importance of first, for example, communications. We see the importance of sharing thought, ideas, questions, and solution to the problem that we may have in our society, in our community. We understand that students, especially the international uh, ambassador or regional body students, they need to have to be equipped with this skill of communications. They need to be able to share their ideas with their counterparts overseas. They need to share their experiences of running, for example, the students body program that Dr. I think Dr. Uh, Maria Asuna will be talking about setting uh, the international body program. But we see the importance of how to prepare students, our students with this skill, the communication skill, the, the ability to share thought, to share ideas. For example, how to, you know, involve in some, uh, uh, event for young people, for example, the UN uh, ambassador, the UN, uh, for example, seminar of, for young people, for example. So we see the importance of this one, how our students can prepare themselves to be able to develop their communication skill so that they can participate in international or in global events uh, organized by different international affiliations or associations. We also see the importance of collaboration skill. We know that today the world become smaller and smaller. The world is shrinking with the power of internet, IOT in this 4.0 thing where everything, all part of the world is interconnected. What happened in one part, one hemisphere of the world is easily you know, identifiable, easily known by people in other part of the world. So we see the importance of collaboration skill that our students need to have, need to develop uh, as part of their soft skill. So our students need the ability to work together to reach their goals. So instead of competing, we see the importance 
the increasing importance of partnership and collaborations. We see that uh, we may have our weakness and strength. And then when we focus on the strength and we can share our strength and our advantages with other people, then we will be stronger and stronger. So we, we, need, we see the importance of this uh, skill where our students, our international student ambassador, international somebody can put their ideas, the talents together and their expertise together so that they can work together with their counterpart, with their peers and with their colleagues from overseas universities. So this, this uh, skill is, is also is really important, yes, for today's more global and more dependent world life. And of course, uh, we also see the importance of critical thinking now that the world becomes more laden with information. Information is comprehensively, you know, everywhere, easily, uh, you know, identifiable. So easily accessible, we can information, see information from social media, online, or offline, from printed, from online, from digital, everything. And of course, this myriad of information is not easy, you know, to discern and to understand. And we need an ability to critically look at this information and find out which one is relevant, which one is not, which one is useful, and which one is not and which one worth sharing, and which one worth keeping, and which one uh, need to be disseminated, and which one need to, we need to keep for ourselves. So this kind of thinking is, is also important when, for example, when we look at the problem in our surrounding, in our community, for example, and then we see and find out what is the best way to help the community, what is the, uh, the best solution to have the current uh, problems that our community is facing. And of course, when we talk about link, uh, learning, we also need to link the learning across subject and also discipline, for example. So the student ambassador, you may come from different subjects, different disciplines. Some may come from humanities, from science, from engineering, from social and from humanities. And we work together to help uh, solve problem that our community, our university may have been facing. And the last one, which is, which is most important is also creativity. Uh, uh, we, need, we need to be more creative. We need to try all new approaches to get things done. And that is what, what we mean by creativity, our ability to find out solutions to the current existing problems that we or our society may have in their life. Now, I'm uh, going to discuss about how millennial students learn, like you as the ambassador, uh, the millennials, the digital migrants. So, for example, Daisy, you mentioned four aspects that are important to take into account when we talk about uh, the ways millennial students, like you, the ambassador, are uh, learning. So, first, for example, the millennial put emphasis or emphasize the importance of mentorship. So mentorship is important. So uh, now the learning is not totally focusing on teacher-centered or group-oriented, but the learning becomes more student-centered. So it's become more individual, where one-to-one -one mentor is, is highly expected. So for example, when we have our international students coming to our university, of course, besides the, the, the classroom interaction that they have, this is the student also, they may need one-to-one -one mentor. They may need one-to-one -one support from the university. And, and of course, that is where the student bodies, the international student ambassador play their key role in supporting, in providing one-to-one -one mentorship for the international students. And another, another, uh, way of learning for millennial learners is also collaboration, as I mentioned earlier in the four C's of 21st century skill. So for example, this is a kind of high connections with peers and also preference for group collaborations. So I think this is the importance of, yeah, for example, they need to find out a group, uh, group preference, yes, uh, group connections where 
they can work together to achieve their goals in life. And of course, as a digital native, technology is high importance. So these young people, they need a seamless integration of technology into learning experience. For example, the learning now with the COVID-19 pandemic, the learning, is, the learning is now everything is virtual. And I think this makes the learning more engaging for uh, the millennials, like the students who are used to the technological, uh, the late technological life or uh, technology related life experience, including in learning. And of course now also students also uh, likes uh, having a direct feedback, for example, in social media, for example, when uh, they upload something, photos or events, and they of course uh, are expecting uh, to receive instant or a quick feedback through, for example, uh, giving likes or thumb up or retweeting or other uh, direct feedback that they need in, in online or uh, digital uh, communications. So I, I think these four aspects are also important in supporting uh, the student's body, the student's ambassador, so that they can play their role as a key components, a uh, key indicators in supporting the internationalizations at our university. So uh, I'm going to uh, uh, a bit uh, more detail about what students ambassador and industry admission relate and how, how they relate to each other. So first of all, I'm, uh, I'm going to talk about the culturally responsive program. You know that the world is global, the world is huge and it's multicultural. And it's full of different ethnicity, races and cultures. And of course, each culture is distinctive and unique. And of course, as uh, the population of the world, we may not know and be familiar with all aspects of the cultures out of our, our culture. So we may be uh, you know, not familiar with, with the culture and we need kind of support and help. And of course, the program that in some program that we are organizing, for example, the summer program or the international classes or the symposium, uh, we need to think of uh, the culture of others. We need to be responsive to the possibilities of different culture that our participants may have or may bring into the program. So we have to be sure that all our international programs are culturally or intercultural responsive. When we talk about, for example, for example, when we talk about food, for example, and we provide the food for international counterpart international participants, we may think we may think of, for example, which food is not permissible by certain group of people, by certain race, by certain culture, by certain origin, for example. When we think of for yes, with the same food, for example, also out of uh, culture, we also think of, for example, the healthy eating style or life, for example, where people now, for some of they avoid eating, for example, meat, for example. Some people now prefer to be vegetarian or vegan, for example. So we need to think of this uh, cultural responsive program, the program which are responsive to differences in cultural affiliation and orientation. And second one is the importance of uh, ambassadors because, of course, uh, this uh, student body provide social and psychological support. You know, as you may have experienced when we go overseas, when we leave our families far away back home, we may feel lonely, we may feel homesick, we uh, may need to do something, but we do not know what to do because we do not know where to go or, or what to do. When we need to go uh, find grocery, for example, we do not know where to find grocery shop, for example, or grocery stores. And this is the importance of international bodies where we can provide our international students with this one-to-one -one mentorship, with this one-to-one -one support. So we may, you know, uh, serve as a liaison officer where we can, you know, uh, show our, our international students where to go, where to find food, where to go for buying groceries, for example, where to go for 
uh, 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 for example, uh, money transferring or something. Yes, so this is important. The possibility of providing social and psychological support for international program. Another important issue with student ambassador and also international admission or international student is also networking and partnership. Yes. My previous slides has mentioned, for example, the importance of networking and partnership among international students. Now, as I will show in my later uh, slides, how important is international networking and partnership for us now in this global and you know more interconnected world. We see, for example, the importance of uh, setting up networking in the region of ASEAN. For Indonesian students, for example, it's important to have partnership with students from the Philippines, from students from uh, Vietnam, from students from Thailand, from students from uh, Taiwan, from students from Malaysia, for example. And of course, this networking and this partnership and your service with the university, I think with the internal offices in your own university, I think will pay you off, will give you some privilege for nomination, for example, as I experienced here at my university at, at UPR, for example, when we have information offer for student partnership or students, for example, symposium or seminar, we will first uh, disseminate this information to our student body before we distribute it to other students. And then because we are more familiar with the student body, with the student's uh, ambassador, and for example, when we receive an offer from ASTEN Secretariat with the ASTEN staff, for example, before we distribute this information to other students at our university, we offer this first to our student body, if any one of them who are available to join the program. Then only when there's no one who respond to this uh, offer, then we will uh, offer these to other students. So this privilege is also important that, that our office, I think most office, industrial offices at our universities can offer to student semester or student study in their respective universities. And of course, this idea, this, uh, all this aspect is uh, meant, is, you know, organized because we have a purpose to get global recognition. We want to increase international admissions or international recognitions. We want to welcome more and more international students to our universities because we understand that they are important for our university. The next slide, my slide will show you why it is important that in interest admission is important, why international student is important, and why the student ambassador is also important in supporting the existence and also the well being of international student. Moderator, Jalu, how many more minutes do I still have? Hello, Jalu, moderator, can you hear me? You still have 10 minutes, sir. 10 minutes, oh, thank you, Jalu. Yes, so the next question is why international admission matters. Now, I'm showing here two most influential international ranking bodies, uh, QS, World University Ranking, and also Times, I Education, or THE, World University Ranking. Why I show these two global uh, industrial ranking bodies? Because I think most universities in the world now, I think they are focusing uh, or they're aiming at achieving high in the international ranking uh, organized by, or provided by these two leading uh, international ranking bodies. Look, for example, if we look at QS, a world university ranking, for example, if you look at here, the indicators, we look at the first, the main one is, for example, academic reputation, which scores 40%, followed by faculty students, 20%, uh, citation for faculty, 20%, and also employee reputation, 10%. If you look at the last one, the last aspect, 5% is international students. So this international ranking body emphasizes the importance of international students as a key performance indicator 
as an important KPI for international ranking. Okay, another one is also, if you look at here, another influential uh, uh, ranking body is also Times Higher Education or THE. Also, if you look at here, for example, teaching which equals 30% and research citation, we also see here international outlook. Included here is also the number of international students, the number of international faculty, the number of international, international uh, partnership, the number of international collaboration, the number of international student symposium, student uh, summit, student conferences. So this influential uh, international ranking body highlights the importance of international outlook, the importance of international students for their uh, KPI or performance indicator. So once again, if you look at here, for example, this is from Times High Education, for example, where it uh, scores 30% for teaching, 30% for research, and then 30% for citations, but it puts 7.5% for international outlooks, which is higher than Times High Education, which is only 5%. And included in this international outlook is students, international students, international faculty members, international a partnership, joint research, joint collaborations, and all international activities that university may have been doing, may have been performing with their overseas counterparts. So once again, the existence of will and well-being of international students really matter. I think if we have heard in the last month, for example, in the United States, when we talk about the Black Lives Matters. So now among us in our life, in our profession here, in our role as university or international student ambassador, the existence of and well-being of international students at our universities respectively really matters. And the existence, the role of student ambassadors matter more. The international students will not possible the admission, the international admission to our university will not possible without substance support, without enough uh, support and help and assistance from those uh, volunteers, those students ambassadors who do their best to support universities in providing all necessary supports and assistance that our international students may need during their stay and their life at our university. So as a way to move forward, I think once again, these five aspects of the changing landscape of international students now becomes more two ways instead of one way, and also the role of ELF, English as a lingua franca in Asia, including in ASEAN, and also the importance of collaborations, the importance of communications in 21st century learning, the importance of uh, critical thinking, and also uh, innovations and creativity supported by the existence of student ambassadors are highly important, are highly essential in supporting the international admissions of our students at university. And at the end, this five aspect will end up supporting, helping the university to move forward, to get global recognitions, to get to achieve high in international ranking, university ranking, whether it is a uh, organized by QS ranking or the, uh, by Times Higher Education or any other international ranking bodies. So that is the importance of student ambassador. And with this, we believe that it is important that we can share our experience, our educational experience, our intercultural experience, how we can 
provide the best possible support, the best possible assistance for our incoming or inbound international students. So, uh, moderator, Jalu, I think that is my talk for today. I hope I don't exceed the limited time that you have uh, assigned or allotted for my presentation. Thank you, everyone. If you have any question, you may ask. And now I will invite the moderator, Jalu, to take. Thank you very much, Dr. Muslim for conducting such an insightful and interesting presentation on students' ambassador role in supporting university in the analysis. And now we're going to have a question and answer for what has been presented by Dr. Muslim. But before we jump into the question and answer session, I'd like to remind you to fill the attendees link, which is uh, you can see in the chat box or you can see on the screen. Okay, now we're going to have the three uh, questioners from all the participants. For, for all of you who would like to ask the question directly to Dr. Muslim, don't hesitate to open your camera and unmute yourself. And so you can type your question on the chat box. Please, for someone who would like to ask the question directly. Okay, everyone would like to ask the question. Uh, can I ask question, the oh, moderator? Please, please state your name first. Okay, uh, my name is Marion. I'm from Indonesia. Before, uh, I really thank to Mr. Ahmad Bukhari for the lecture. Uh, my question is, how is it important to uh, for student ambassador to learn culture differences uh, for doing their job later on? That's my question. Thank you. Jalu, yeah. Thank you very much, Mary, for the question. And now please, Dr. Muslim, to give your uh, answer to that question. Dr. Muslim, please. Thank you, Jalu. Thank you, Mary. That's a very interesting question. Uh, at the moment, I'm researching, this is part of my academic uh, endeavor with a team. Uh, I think it's with Dr. Maria, too, from PNU. We are researching the the city chair uh, program as run by Samuel. One of the questions that we are focusing in that research is the intercultural uh, experience, belief, and uh, practices of the, participa the participating uh, CTJ program. So, for example, one of the, the response I received from one participant, I think it's from Philippines, a girl who came to UPI, I think last year, I think, uh, last year before the pandemic, okay, 2019. She mentioned, for example, how the body, the body from our university helped navigate her first week of life in Bandung. For example, uh, when she talked about, she mentioned the food because uh, she found that the food in Indonesia is different from the food she has in the Philippines. She said that the, the food in Indonesia is more spicy than the one she had in the Philippines. So every time she needs to buy food or she needs to go to maybe restaurant to buy food and then she will ask the body what, what is the level of spiciness of this food. And then because she doesn't speak Indonesia very well, so she asks uh, the help from the body how to, how, to, how to ask, for example, to the seller to give, for example, do not give too spicy food. And then the body, and then said in Bahasa Indonesia, uh, spicy mean pedas in Bahasa Indonesia. So, uh, and then she, the body, the body uh, uh, tell her, say to the seller, jangan terlalu pedas, which mean 
not too spicy. I think this is an example of cultural knowledge. I think it's very helpful, Marin. Then the body, the body does didn't tell her this term not very spicy, tidak terlalu pedas. And then she bought the food without telling the seller the level of spiciness. And then this uh, Filipino girl and then add the food and then she end up, for example, having stomach aches, stomach upset because of the food. So I can imagine that that may jeopardize, that may spoil her activity of becoming a sea teacher participant for one month in Bandung. of cross-cultural knowledge, we need to understand that food really matters. The level of spiciness. I know that Indonesian Sundanese people in West Java, I think Mr. Fidu Sukmadi is you know, a champion in eating spicy food, for example. But don't, don't take it for granted that our visiting international students may like the spicy food too. In Bandung, for example, if you never been to Bandung, we have uh, like a crackers, we call it a uh, Kropo, so you, we also, you also say Kropo. What do you say in, in the Philippines, Dr. Rena? Do you have this cracker, Kropo too? Uh, krope. Krope, oh, so Kropo, see? So we share a similar <laughs> term between uh, the Filipino, the Malay, also the Malay, also Kropo. That's Kropo in Basaksa or cracker? Yes. Yes, okay. we, in, in, in Bandung, Dr. Rena, we have this type of food, we call it the Kropo. Maichi, Maichi is the owner, the brand. And it has 10 mm -hmm. level of spiciness, level one until 10. Can you imagine, yeah. Dr. Rena, if you choose the level 10, I think you may end up in hospital if you are not used to eating that kind of food and you choose level 10. So this knowledge is also important. I, and I also, I also have, I, in my study, I read one response from Indonesian students who went to Philippines for her uh, teaching practicum in sea teacher. She mentioned, for example, because as a Muslim, for example, she need to, uh, when it comes to food, she need to be more careful with the selection of the food because the Muslims are not supposed to consume, for example, pork, uh, yes, related food. So I think buddies in the Philippines, for example, I think need, need to know this uh, cultural requirement, for example, oh, the Muslim people, they don't eat pork related food. So uh, when we have visitors interested from Indonesia or from Malaysia, for example, and they are Muslim, I need to ensure that we, we uh, you know, provide them with the food that is permissible and the food that is acceptable in their cultural belief, for example. So Marin, once again, that knowledge of cultural differences, I think it's very important to know the students, bodies, the student ambassador need to know this. I think all student bodies need to learn these cultural differences. I think uh, Indonesian students, they need to learn the culture of the Philippines, the Malaysia, the Thailand, the Vietnam, and also vice versa. I think this is important. Marin, I hope this has answered your question. Okay, thank you so much, uh, sir. Yeah. Now I really understand about it. Thank you, Marin. Thank you very much, Dr. Muslim, for your response. It is very important to highlight that to learn a cultural differences when you attend a program, it always is very important. And you give a very important uh, example too, food differences, because um, many of international students are having trouble or uh, whether they are enjoying that uh, food differences or in uh, food culture itself. Now, we're going to have the uh, next question sent to us that I will uh, read to the audience. Assalamualaikum, I'm from UAD. Good morning, Professor Ahmad Bukhari. Thank you for the wonderful knowledge. My name is Arif Tono Nugroho. I would like to ask about how to elaborate between culture and technology in the same time for international students as we know we have so much cultural products, but we may forget that we have incredible technology too. So how make it work it for them in pursuing internalization and give them a memorable experience uh, in Indonesia? Thank you. Please, uh, Dr. Muslim, uh, your response to the question. 
Thank you, uh, Jalur. Thank you, Arif from UAD Universitas Ahmad Dahlan. Yes, uh, UAD is also one of the our partner university in Indonesia. I have some colleague from Universitas Ahmad Dahlan. Yes, uh, this is typical of millennial question technology. Yes, as I mentioned in my slide, technology and culture. Now, because you are an ambassador, I think we also need to acknowledge the importance of understanding culture differences in technology. For example, now, when a student ambassador, for example, you may uh, need to share information, flyers or leaflet or brochure, for example, in your social media, in your Instagram, in your Facebook, in your website, for example. And uh, when we want to upload this informational materials, we need to think of cross-cultural understanding cross-culture values. For example, who want to share this information? Is this picture, for example, in our flyer, is this acceptable in one culture or is it not acceptable in another culture? I remember, I think maybe this last month, last week, one very famous singer, American in US, I think, he was asked to send apology by the people of Hindu, the Hindu people, because she made the picture of her album, which may be considered offensive to the people of Hindu. So this is an example of how technology and culture relates. When you want to produce technological product, whether it's flyer, whether it is, for example, leaflet, a brochure, we need to think whether the, uh, for example, the material we are going to upload is acceptable, whether they comply with the international regulation, with the copyright, for example. For example, when we have a meeting and then it includes, for example, pictures, photos, and video, for example, I think in, in some cars, maybe in Indonesia, sometimes we just take it for granted that we record everything. We, get the photo, we take the photos of the participant when we record everything and we disseminate and we just publish it online, for example. In Indonesia, to a certain extent, that is still acceptable. But this may not be acceptable in other cultures, for example. In, for example, in Australia, for example, in, in for example, in United States or in Europe, you need to ask permission from the participant in the form of consent form, for example. Is this acceptable? Are you okay if we upload your photo in our website, in our Instagram, for example? So this is an example of how technology is inescapable from the culture. The technology product cannot be uh, escaped from our obligation to comply with cultural uh, with, with, with cultural uh, requirements, with cultural convention. So for example, when you want to upload, for example, the photos of children, for some underage, we may, it is maybe not acceptable to show the photos of children, photos, for example, in our uh, visual. We need to, for example, blur the face of the young children in our photo, for example. So uh, Arif, once again, these yes, are yes. some example of how important is knowing and acknowledging a cross-cultural convention, cross-cultural uh, requirement when we produce some technological product, whether for example, for young people for in, in your profession as student ambassador, whether it's leaflet or brochure, or for example, booklet, and then you upload in social media or Facebook or other media. So Arif, I think that is what I can share. So I think that we can uh, perform our job, our do safely without being offensive to other counterpart of us. Thank you, Arif, and also Jan. All right, thank you, Prof. Jalu, you are mute, Jalu. Sorry, moderator, you are mute. Uh, 
Okay, thank you very much for your uh, reminders. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Arif, and thank you very much, Mr. Abu, for the response. It is reassert once again that uh, we have to learn and we have to comprehend different systems and different places because the use of technology in a different custom would mean something to other people. And now we're going to have the last question from Ms. Alpha. Uh, I would like to read the question. Mr. Abu, I'm Alpha. My question is how to give social and psychological support toward the international students who get a very bad homesick. Oh, it is a, a very nice and uh, good question. Please, uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Muslim, to give your response. Thank you, Yalu. Uh, where is Elsa from, Jalu? Alphat. Oh, Alphat. Oh, sorry, Alphat. Sorry, Alphat. Sorry, Alphat. Yes, thank you, Alphat. I think I know her. Yes. Uh, how to how to provide a psychological support for our international students who are very homesick? I think Alpha. I think Alphat, You are now luckier because you are living now in uh, an era with fully technology support. Now you have all means of communication. I remember, I know I'm, I'm not digital migrant. I'm uh, not digital native, I'm digital migrant. Remember, for example, when, when I lived in the United States back in 2004, I didn't have mobile phone, no smartphone. Uh, I didn't have my phone in my apartment. So when I want to contact my family because I felt homesick, I need to put the public phone. And then my family also back in Indonesia, my mobile phone or no smartphone. So when I call her by public phone, she also need to go to a public phone in Indonesia. We shop in Indonesia. What we could do is only calling by this from public phone to another phone and it's only using audio media. It's only sound, right? But now I think everything is made easier now. I think now you can use your smartphone to call your family back in your country. You can use a video call, you can use Zoom, you can use Google Meet, you can use all other media with both visual and audio, audio visual. Now I think, I think some technology provide 3D technology. Yes, yeah, sometime when you call, someone uh, in a distance, you can, you know, for example, shake hand, yes? You can extend your hand to shake the hand or you can touch or something. So Alpha, I think it's, it's important now that uh, the media to help to support, uh, to cure the homesickness is now much more easier to find. So we can ask, invite our students, uh, our uh, international students to make a call help them, for example, if they have problem with the inter international phone uh, call. Or we can also now, for example, another aspect is, for example, when, when they feel, I feel homesick because I miss my food. Ah, we have some student from Thailand. And this student, for example, really homesick because she miss her or his mom's cooking, for example, Tom Yum. And now I think it's easy for you to take her or him to Thai restaurant in Bandung. If you have student from, uh, from, for example, from Korea, come to Bandung and she or she, he miss, for example, Korean food, kimchi, for example, I think it's very easy now, just take her or him to a nearest Korean restaurant. For example. So I think, I think it's, it's now much easier for you as student body, how to help to support your uh, your international uh, students, uh, international uh, partners uh, psychologically. So you have all means of support, whether it's by communication, by making call, audio, visual, or video, by providing them with the food, for example, or also we can take you for some entertainment. In Bandung, Dr. Rene, I think, Dr. Rene has been to our university in Bandung. So please come again, Dr. Anne. We will invite you and take you after the pandemic, of course. We have a very close uh, hot spring water. It's only uh, maybe 
10 minutes from the University of Rennes. And you can come here to UP and then we will take you and we'll indulge you with this hot spring water, for example. We can take you also to, for example, uh, some places of interest in, in Bandung. So this also some example, Alpha, that you can do to help your international counterpart when they feel homesick and they need to have some entertainment so that they can have a more refreshed mind so that they can you know, go back to their program, they can run and the program more effectively and smoothly. Alfat, I think these are some examples that I can share with you. And I think uh, uh, other people may also share other uh, practices and experiences of helping and supporting our international students psychologically. Thank you, Alfat and Jan. Thank you very much, sir, for the answer. Thank you very much, Ms. Alpha, for uh, that question and uh, um, for the answer. And I think we don't have to uh, worry when uh, you are here in Indonesia because you have such supporting uh, members of bodies here in uh, UPI. You will be accompanied and you will uh, not feeling, you will not, you will not feel homesick and feeling far from home. Okay. And uh, now I think it's enough time for question and answer session with our first speaker. And thank you very much once again, Mr. Uh, Ahmad Buhari Muslim for that insightful answers and informations. Now we all know the important role of student ambassadors in the internalization, uh, which is very crucial. I mean, of the changing landscape of the higher education institution and we now uh, use English as a lingua franca in our activities in uh, ASEAN communities and also we face a different culture in 21st century learning and also we should bridge for networking and broader global recognition. And now before we move to our second speaker, I'd like you to uh, follow our social media on the website, which is www.oia or Directorate of International Affairs underscore UPI. Since we usually share any fruitful information there, then if you make some posts, don't forget to tag uh, this Instagram as well. And now before we uh, proceed, I'd like to ask the audience how you feel by far in joining this program. So if there's anyone uh, like to express their impression or their uh, statement regarding this program, please don't hesitate to interact with us. Okay, please anyone, if there's anyone who'd like to say something. Okay, Assalamualaikum. And a very good morning to all of the participants. Okay, my name is Muhammad Razam bin Ghazali. And I come from University of Penedidik Consultant Idris in Malaysia. And I just want to express that my feeling is very overwhelming because I can see a lot of people from other university. And then for the first session, I can get like a lot of information about on, on how uh, your behalf can call the strategy to uh, to uh, be mingling with the international student. And I can say that this program is very nice, very good for me personally. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Wanda. Nice comments, and I'd like to thank you too for joining this program. There is, is there anyone who would like to say something? Hello, good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm Mr. Babiera from the University of the Immaculate Conception in Davao City, Philippines. Uh, in behalf of the College of Teacher Education, I would like to thank First, um, in the Deacon Indonesia, specifically Dr. Ahmad uh, Bukuri, for uh, allowing us to join this very insightful uh, summit. I am also very happy that uh, we will be able to share our practices and our um, uh, strategies in continuing our 
international uh, student model organization and as, as well as the activities for our international um, collaboration with um, ASEAN partner universities. Indeed, this pandemic uh, cannot stop us from um, doing or from uh, uh, collaborating with each one in building a strong and a better ASEAN community. Thank you very much. Thank you too for Dr. Reed from UIC. What a nice comment. And uh, I hope you have uh, a fruitful discussion today and I hope you enjoy the whole program. Thank you very much for such nice comments. And we'd like to move to our second speaker. And ladies and gentlemen, that uh, we know as members of international student bodies, we know that sometimes we face some serious obstacles and problems on managing the program for international students. It is probably because of our lack of knowledge and experience about it. Also because of miscommunication sometimes happen between the members of the international students. That's why we have to how to run a successful program. Therefore, I'd like to invite our second speaker, Dr. Maria Elvira A. Asuan, to deliver her topic about setting up and managing a successful student ambassador program. But first of all, let me introduce Dr. Asuan. Dr. Asuan is the director of Linkage and International Office of Philippines Normal University, and she is one of our special guests in the summit. And for your information, Dr. Aswan is one of the initiator of the summit, along with Mr. Fidi Sutmayani, professor of the Department of Communication Studies, Faculty of Social Science Education, Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia. Uh, before we start, I'd like to once again remind you to keep your microphone muted. And also, if you're going to ask a question, uh, you're going to have it in the question and answer sessions. So, Dr. Aswan, the floor is yours. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, Dr. Aslan. Okay, of course. Let me share my um, PowerPoint. Okay, so to the Honorable Rector, Professor Dr. Solihuddin, uh, to the Vice Rector, Honorable Professor Dr. Didi Sukiyadi, uh, to the Director of Directorate of International Affairs, Dr. Ahmad Bukuri Muslim, uh, to Ms. Shirley Tankilisan, uh, to Mr. Vidi Sukmayadi, other officials uh, from the Universitas Pindikan Indonesia, participants, uh, Selamat Pagi, Magandong Umaga, Good morning. Uh, before I start my presentation, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to share our experience in uh, establishing a volunteer organization strategies and in making it uh, sustainable. Uh, UP is a good partner university, uh, PNU and uh, UP are both founding members of the Association of Southeast Asian Teacher Education Network. As the executive director of Aston, I can say that uh, UP, after seven years of uh, partnership and collaboration, we established not only a good uh, relationship, but uh, a meaningful one. Um, next. Okay. How involved uh, started? So, oh my wait a minute start in it okay so how involved started um so my topic for today is about setting up and managing a successful student ambassadors program but uh before i present to you my topic um i would like to invite you to watch a short video of uh, pnu's uh, student ambassadors uh program Okay. Can 
Did you see it? The university's hosting of the 9th Apex Teacher Education yeah. Forum and the 11th International Alcop Conference paves an avenue for TNU students to exude their leadership and volunteerism. The success of this event gave way to the creation of the Philippine Normal University International Volunteers and Leaders Body or TNU in full. The TNU International Volunteers and Leaders Body is the official student arm of the Linkages and International Office. Aligned with the university's strategic direction of internationalization, TNU in for teacher education in Southeast Asia. It has assisted the university in its official events and in accommodating both local and foreign visitors. The members are equipped with essential skills to carry out the purpose of the organization, who also serve as student ambassadors. The volunteers went through vigorous training on technical and creative writing, photography, video editing, graphic language proficiency, and gender and development. These training sessions help the student ambassadors to be well-rounded on the demands of international relations and diplomacy work. Part of the organization's sustainability plan, the alumni themselves conduct these training sessions to the new generation of volunteers and leaders who will continue the legacy of PNE and for students. Members of PNU involved, international exposure is very important. The members themselves represent the university in different international fora, cultural exchange programs, and academic fellowship that further strengthens their capacity as international student ambassadors. The sphere of influence of PNU involved extends to the Southeast Asian countries, China and the United States of America, among others. The organization continuously participates in different exchange programs, even amidst the pandemic, through the Linkages and International Offices Initiative of Internationalization at Home. In its seven years of existence, the organization also prides itself to hone not only students with a heart of service, but a true leader in their respective communities and international youth organizations outside the university. This highlights the organization's culture of excellence as its members are also recognized by the university through conferring academic service and leadership awards. Hence, in the changing demands of the university due to its effort in putting PNU in the forefront of the ASEAN teacher training institutions, successful student-led organizations who help the university achieve its mission of developing innovative teachers, not just in the Philippines, but in the ASEAN region. More than preparing me to be a cultural ambassador of the university to both its local and international linkages, PNU Involved made me become a multicultural educator. In fact, the highlight of the Service Student Teacher Exchange in Southeast Asia, or C Teacher Project of CMEO. Under the program, I spent half of my practical in Bandung, Indonesia, teaching English to students with varied cultural backgrounds and language proficiency. As a C teacher, I do not only bring with me my teaching content, but also my culture and my identity. First, as a Filipino, second, as that I got from PNU involved, equipped me with the right values and attitudes whenever I encounter people of different cultures. Today, I am teaching in the senior high school department at one of the tier one universities in the Philippines, where I also share and extend my passion in internationalization and multiculturalism to my students as the moderator of the official this for me. How will I benefit from that? These are the usual questions that may come to our mind whenever tasks are given to us. It is human nature to think of what we will get in return for doing a task. 
was once a style of person until I joined the PMU and the The organization taught me the real meaning and value of volunteerism. Finding people involved strengthened my character, greater sense of fulfillment, knowing that I am of service wholeheartedly. Now that I am already a public school teacher, it is easier for me to always put my best foot forward and go an extra mile because being involved has already inculcated and pulled the persona of a volunteer in. Experiences in being involved through the very things in our life that we will not do because we will gain something from it. Being involved provided an opportunity to strengthen the volunteer in me. It can hone you to find your advocacy and help you to become a better and proactive citizen in your community. Furthermore, your multicultural knowledge that you can learn from this organization could help you on this find meaning, solution, and inclusivity that the world needs. I know for sure that each one of us has the potential to make a difference. But in order for us to do that, we need a good platform to help us improve ourselves. And I am fortunate enough to have such an amazing platform in PNU International Volunteers and Leaders Club. Being a member of PNU Club has helped us from the educator and the One particular skill that we were able to hone in our state in is our organizational skills through various trainings and real life experiences. We were able to learn how to manage our time, delegate tasks properly organize events efficiently and successfully. These skills came in handy not just when I was in college, but also now that I am already an educator. And that is one of the things that I am thankful for for being part of this organization. Can you involve gave me the opportunity to expand and broaden the skills and achievements in my resume. The activities I participated in benefit having done more experiences than other gadgets. I was able to highlight the skills I've learned in the duration of my stay in the organization, such as leadership, communication skills, ICT skills, creativity, and cross-cultural skills, among others. Joining this organization also helped me develop my character and work etiquette and gave me the benefit of becoming a higher potential in my career. Indeed, PNU helped and nurtured our potential and before moving to a real work environment. Being part of this prestigious organization enabled us to widen our perspective, cultural sensitivity, career opportunities, and most especially our intercultural competence. Acquiring diverse cultural perspectives molded us to be more creative and innovative that eventually help our career pressures develop our cognitive and effective skills that enhance our intercultural understanding and broaden our role. As a result, we, as a young successful professionals, are able to influence our own classroom community to have a greater awareness on global issues and as well as to foster global mindedness, enhance cultural understanding, and to be more involved. We were going to carry out multiple tasks, tasks that needs to be accomplished no matter what, because the office that we represent has its essential role not limited to being ourselves, but to its national and international associates. Having this kind of environment, change is inevitable. With this, the organization has nurtured its members to be able to adapt to every situation. And that thing is very important to me teaching, especially where teaching in the midst of pandemic. There is a constant need to reinvent thyself and search innovation to deliver tasks 
and teach the students at the best possible way. I say that I am grateful that I was nurtured in the field of info and I am able to adapt to changing circumstances. Thank you. And leader's body helped me to understand more the importance of a culturally responsive teaching and learning process. It prepared me to understand and cater to the diverse background of my students so I can help them solve their potential as we learn and work together. Indeed, my international experience and exposure prepared me to become an international teacher. It's one of the best choices, possibly one of the best choices I've contributed to how I handle my professional life right now. So I can really compare being involved as the water to do my tea, or for us, as the tea um, place in TNU or our soil. Um, we already know that we have the, the potential to grow, but uh, being involved amplified and really helped us achieve uh, that potential. Being involved really helped me cope with the demand of being a teacher um, a few years back and also right now i'm working at the department of education disaster reduction and management service as a climate change focus and it's a really high high intensity job and there's a big sense of accountability and pressure to perform and i can say that with um and also assisting the linkage of international office facilities just um uh, prepared me in this kind of work so i hope that other students from pnu would be able to join pnu involved because it's really one of the most uh, life-changing organizations that there is Uh, it describes briefly our uh, program and it shows how this uh, how our student volunteers grow and develop you know, as uh, as a person personally and of course uh, professionally okay um let's go back to my powerpoint presentation So how uh, involved uh, started? Uh, the creation of a volunteers group, you no, know, as an office-based organization, is um, accidental. Uh, I used to have student volunteers, but uh, on a personal basis. I usually invite uh, students to work on a specific project. In my office, you asked by the Department of Education to host the ninth um, APEC Future Education Forum and the 11th International Alco uh, Conference. I asked one of my co teachers to invite student volunteers or student ambassadors to help me assist the guests from uh, the eight countries, coming from the eight countries. Asking for uh, student volunteers uh, uh, with the students. That is why uh, a connection is important. Uh, uh, I asked my uh, colleagues to help me find students who are willing to help me uh, with this uh, big task. Connection and good relationship with uh, co teachers, with uh, colleagues helps me a lot no, in facilitating and assisting our participants from different countries. So, I, I, uh, ALCOB means APEC Learning Community uh, Builders. The university's hosting of uh, ALCOB uh, is an avenue, no, pave an avenue for PNU uh, student volunteers to exude their leadership and volunteerism. The success of uh, this event gave way to the creation of the Philippine Normal University International Volunteers and Leaders involved. Okay, so creation of international volunteers uh, leaders body to make the 
to establish uh, PNU uh, involved officially, we apply. We apply. The organization apply for accreditation, no, at the PNU uh, OSAS, uh, Office of the Social uh, Office of the Student uh, Services, uh, Student Affairs and Student Services. Um, the, the organization cannot function without the certification from the Office of the Student Affairs and uh, Student uh, Services. Okay, uh, the, to accredit, no, one of the requirements, one of the requirements of uh, accreditation is uh, the constitution of uh, the, the constitution and bylaws that serve as the guide of all members to fulfill their roles or tasks. And at the same time, uh, the constitution and bylaws are served no, as a policy or guidelines in recruiting or proposing a training uh, program. Uh, when the accreditation, that's the time that we are allowed to recruit uh, student volunteers. Before I discuss the recruitment process, I would like to describe uh, first the PNU involved. PNU involved is an office-based organization accredited by the PNU Office of the Student Affairs and uh, Student Services. And uh, it follows the outcome approach. Um, PN, PNU involved follows the out, this outcomes based approach. The outcomes based approach is uh, completely uh, student centered, which uh, focus on what students know and uh, can actually do. Uh, through this uh, approach, uh, the students develop their competence, um, competence, understanding why they are doing and apply their knowledge appropriately and uh, responsibly. Uh, the members of uh, involved are not only trained uh, to, to be a good uh, student ambassador, but, but also to be a good leader. The training and experience uh, make them committed and reliable uh, volunteers unless uh, how to uh, how to recruit no? the the volunteers or the ambassadors. Um, as an official organization of uh, the university. The, uh, the Office of the Student Affairs uh, give a one-day uh, recruitment uh, exclusive for recruitment only. All organizations have had a chance to put up their booth and create an activity that will help each organization persuade PNU students to join uh, the organization. Uh, to convince students to join, uh, the ad hoc committee of involved or the, the different committees prepare games, no? brochure and application forms. Now, after applying or fill up the, the, the application form, there are certain process. No? So what are these uh, process, selection process? First is uh, to classify the application forms according to specialization. So uh, second is um, there is a strict select selection of student ambassador. We see to it that the applicants came from a different area of specialization. It means that the applicants has different skills and talents to offer to the organization. Uh, the selection process is led by the head of the membership and recruitment uh, committee. But uh, in case that there is an issue to be joined the deliberation process. So uh, as I mentioned a while ago, that uh, some 
applicants, no? the new recruits are under probation members and are expected to participate in at least five activities without uh, absences. The senior volunteers will, of course, access their, or assess their performance. Uh, the if, uh, as I've mentioned, you know, if there is certain concern or issues you not know, to be discussed during the deliberation, the executive committee, uh, such as the president uh, of the organization, vice president, sec uh, secretary general, and other of, uh, officers are required, you no, know, or um, yes, required to to join during the deliberation. Now. Uh, in our uh, in the constitution and bylaws of the PNU involved, we have uh, four or five um, committees. Okay, first is the education and training committee chairperson. So, what are their um, tasks? No, the committee chairperson shall head the training program of the organization which shall be conducted during the summer break or when the need arises. So therefore, there is a regular uh, training program for the student volunteers or for the student ambassadors. Uh, the, the education committee is uh, in charge no, for this. Shall keep the members updated on all the organization of uh, in all activities of the organization. So they should be, uh, the members are updated uh, through uh, regular meetings. So there's a lot of uh, way, no, or ways on how to update all the members of uh, PNU Info. Shall uh, perform any task as may be required by the president. Okay. Uh, the next committee, which is also very important, is the membership and recruitment uh, committee uh, chairperson. Um, the, the chairperson shall head the recruitment of the organization. So it means the, the chairperson um, leads no? and at the same time uh, present his or her plan you know, on how to recruit uh, new members. Uh, shall inform the members on announcement and updates. Uh, the chairperson shall update the probationary and regular members about their uh, membership status. So you see, uh, uh, every time there is an event, you know, since uh, as I've mentioned, we assess our, especially the uh, probationary uh, members, uh, we assess their performance. So they are regularly updated no, of their status of their membership. Shall keep a copy of all records of applicants and existing and former members of the organization. And uh, the chairperson shall perform any other task as required by the, the president, or if I may add, <laughs> required or asked by the, the advisor. Next is uh, the promotions no? and documentation committee uh, chairperson. Um, the committee, the, this committee, uh, the, the, the chair shall secure a documentation of every activity done by the organization. Uh, we, we need this because uh, we submit, no? all of our accomplishments, all of our reports, not only to the, to the office, but to the Office of uh, Student Affairs, um, shall ensure that all uh, LEO, no? LEO means the Linkages and International Office and involved events are promoted to the campus. Uh, the, uh, the PNU involved, since uh, they are the student arm of the office, they are um, required to, to promote the all activities, all of activities of the uh, office through the Facebook uh, and of course in our website. Then um, the chairperson shall be in charge of the technical events that Leo and involved is affiliated with 
and shall be responsible for maintaining the group's face, Facebook page and uh, Weebly. Shall update the bulletin board of the Linkages International Office and PNU involved each term or when the need arises. So those are the, the, the tasks no, of this uh, particular committee. Of course, in our organization, we have this uh, Committee on Finance and uh, Logistics. Uh, the chairperson shall keep an account materials of uh, the organization. Um, shall keep all financial records of the organization shall prepare and present financial report no, to the organization. Uh, uh, in our organization, uh, there's, it should be a transparent organization. So when it comes to financial report, no, in, when it comes to our accomplishment, it should be discussed during the regular meeting or sometimes, uh, especially during the assembly. So. Uh, in our organization, aside from our regular meeting, we have this assembly uh, of all uh, members of the organization, projects for the organization's fund. Of course, since this, this organization is a volunteers organization, so um, we need uh, income generating projects. Uh, next is, of course, shall perform any other tasks as may be required by the by the president. Uh, so the contribution of each member uh, committee grow, uh, helps uh, the members grow as an individual, uh, develop, develop um, their leadership uh, skills, um, follow or stick to their tasks uh, because of the guidelines or policies uh, written in our uh, constitution and bylaws, and uh, it contributes to the fulfillment of the objectives mandated to the linkages and uh, international uh, office. Okay. So what are the ways to engage uh, or retain volunteers? Uh, volunteers? First is to provide realistic expectations and um, uh, goals. So uh, provide realistic expectations and um, actionable goals will help them to be successful in providing service and allow them to have the greatest uh, impact. And of course, uh, volunteers should always understand what, uh, what your organization is asking them. So there is uh, an orientation of um, the, the different uh, pro projects or programs or activities of the office so that they will know uh, their role or function. And the volunteers are required you know, to understand the vision and mission of the university and of course the linkages and international office. And uh, lastly, uh, they are also required you know, to understand the targets and the priority task you know, of the, the office. Next is, um, as, uh, as the student arm you know, of the Linkages and International Office, student ambassadors are oriented, as I've mentioned, oriented not only by the, the the projects and activities, but also the different, uh, the mission, mission and goals of the office. So it means that they are treated as part, as part of the office. So um, sometimes um, the students are, you know, uh, simply uh, part you know, of the tasks or the, the, the activities or programs of the, the office. Next is um, invest time and create strategy for volunteer training organization uh, training program. Um, actually, this is uh, since uh, the, the office is one of the uh, busiest no, office in the university. It's very difficult to, to give time. 
but uh, to have a successful engagement no, of volunteers, uh, the organizations must be able to provide um, time and of course, provide adequate uh, training. As I've mentioned, uh, every uh, summer or as need arises, the Linkages and International Office organized a uh, training program for student ambassadors. Uh, the members are equipped with essential skills to uh, carry out the purpose of the organization who, are, who also serve as student uh, ambassadors of the office. The volunteers went through rigorous uh, training on technical creative writing, um, what else, photography, uh, video editing, graphic designing, hosting, uh, event, uh, event management, uh, tour guiding, uh, language proficiency, and of course, gender and development. Uh, these training sessions help uh, the student ambassadors to be uh, well-rounded on the demands of international relations and uh, diplomacy work. As part of the organization's sustainability plan, the alumni themselves, the alumni of PNU involved, conduct these training sessions to the new generation of volunteers and leaders who will continue the, the legacy of uh, involved. Um, part of the training is uh, the planning session, uh, making a project proposal, uh implementing the project and of course assessing the project every event is also essential meaning uh giving feedbacks no in the post conference the student ambassadors uh share their experiences um and insights or the lessons learned no from the activity they also identify the things they need to improve and the things uh, that need to be uh, continued. Um, the university actually finance uh, or support the training as long as there is an approved uh, training proposal. As, uh, as we can see, the university uh, um, is uh, really very supportive no, of uh, this particular organization as, as, as the student arm of the linkages and international office. And um, what else? Creating a well-planned uh, training program is uh, key for the development, motivation, and retention of volunteers. Uh, next is the uh, be humanistic with your volunteers and get to know them personally. No one wants to engage with organization that is dry and doesn't uh, communicate with them in humanistic way. Personal uh, interaction with the student ambassadors uh, is essential. Uh, volunteers clearly uh, want to build a relationship to the people in the office and uh, friendship inside the organization is important. The atmosphere uh, should create an environment that promotes the building of a uh, good relationship. Uh, student ambassadors, of course, no? student ambassadors are uh, students. No? The purpose why they are in the university is to uh, study, not to become a full-time volunteers. Because of this, uh, the linkages and in, uh, international office asked the volunteers to submit their schedule of their duty or in the office. We treat them professionally when um, at work and we teach them know the boundaries when to act professionally and uh, uh, personally. Uh, respect. Uh, your volunteers value and their time. No? Respect should be the foundation of every action and interaction with the volunteers. Uh, to truly uh, respect uh, our student ambassadors, we need to understand their values and personal gains they hope to achieve from providing their volunteers time and make the most meaningful use of their commitment. 
to the to the office. Next, uh, of course, uh, during our regular meeting or assembly, or maybe in our uh, FB page, no, uh, we tend to recognize our volunteers and their achievement. Of course, everyone likes to, to be recognized for their achievements. Recognition can promote a sense of uh, gratitude and keep your volunteers coming back for years to come, just like our uh, alumni, PNU involved alumni. Um, after seven years of existence, they are still there to train our uh, volunteers, no current volunteers or student ambassadors. For each achievement, there is a congrat um, congratulatory message announced during the, the meeting. Uh, next is the be social and get your volunteers involved. Of course, social media, as uh, mentioned by Dr. Ahmad, no, is very important. Social media is a great tool to utilize, uh, uh, increase engagement with the volunteers. Developing a strategic social media strategy is also very important. Uh, social media help a lot in promoting uh, the organization, the organization outside the university as uh, actually asking uh, PNU involved to participate in their projects. This is an amazing um, invitation coming from different universities of our student ambassadors. It's not only inside PNU, uh, they can see the best practices of other organizations from other uh, universities. Be accessible for volunteers at all times, no? not only, of course, the current volunteers, but also the alumni. No? Accessibility is um, of, often uh, overlooked as a means of increasing engagement with volunteers. Issues and concerns may arise in uh, fulfilling their commitment in the implementation of the internationalization of the linkages and international office. Therefore, the advisor or of the organization or any staff, no staff member uh, of the office need to be uh, accessible, in especially when the, the volunteer needs someone to talk to or they need to, um, to talk or to discuss uh, some issues or concerns. So, my dear participants, um, the as I have mentioned, the social media is a uh, great um, is very important, and uh, the tips for this is um, to provide volunteers with uh, several methods of uh, contact like uh, through mobile phone, um, messenger, or email, or in Indonesia, uh, WhatsApp is very popular. Then, or, or group chat or video call. You know? Then another one is provide new volunteers, especially the new recruits, with a designated shadow you know, if they need immediate uh, assistance. Uh, Dr. Ahmad mentioned about this, like mentor, you know, so that serves as a shadow, you know, especially for the newcomers. Um, the Linkages International Office staff um, can, uh, can do this also or maybe the, the PNU alumni uh, involved, no? involved uh, alumni involved. And of course, um, create on your organization's website or social media um, account. No? So uh, to sum up, uh, the secret in managing and sustaining volunteers is to provide them good experience. So uh, based on the video clips, based on their testimonies, the PNU involved alumni, and uh, of course we have uh, PNU involved here in our uh, Zoom meeting, no? uh, the linkages in international office uh, with 
the help of course of PNU info no uh, with the support of uh, PNU no uh, we are um, trying our we are uh, trying our best to to provide uh, PNU involved a great uh, experience uh, because of uh, this no one of the surefire ways not to encourage volunteers to help and gain out of the experience um, to end my presentation I would like to um, of course no it, it's it's in the screen um, one of the quotes uh, from Arthur Ashi. Uh, this is for the students who ambassador who are here today. Uh, volunteer, start where you are, use what you have, and do what you can. So be involved and um, prosper and develop. And uh, from Helen Dyer, no? Volunteerism is the voice of the people put into action. These actions uh, shape and mold the present into a future of which we can all be proud. Um, say that um, the I am so happy. I am so happy with my volunteers. I am proud no, uh, of my PNU uh, involved alumni and my student ambassadors, current uh, student ambassadors, and I am happy with their achievements and what they are now. So that's end my presentation. Terima uh, kasih. Marami pong salamat and uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Aslan, for your insightful and uh, interesting and it's also very important uh, presentation information for us, student bodies and uh, international students. Bodies. And now it's been informed uh, before that this program is initiated both by uh, Dr. Aslan from the Philippines and also by uh, Mr. Fiji Supayani from uh, UPI. Uh, in this uh, time, I'd like also to invite Dr. Pini Sukhmayani to address the floor. Please, Dr. Pini. Uh, All right. Hello. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi. Magandang umaga. And I'm very happy. Ah, yes. Yes. Okay. Ah. Sorry. <laughs> yes, I'd love to extend my heartfelt gratitude to Dr. Maria for her presentation. It is why, at the first time, we invited Dr. Maria for this particular reason. Uh -huh. I remember four years ago. When I was in Lokati City, I met Dr. Maria and we talked about this issue. Alliances is very common among universities, but what about the students? Every uni in every university, students is actually the main stakeholder. Yes. Why, why don't we? Why don't we involve them? Each university has their own bodies, international student volunteers. So why don't we start to involve them more into these alliances? So that conversation was very inspiring. So we talk and we plan to do the some sort of student gym body. But unfortunately, the pandemic, yeah, yeah, due to the pandemic, we had to find some, some other strategies. And thank you, 
Alhamdulillah, through this first summit, we can set at least the, the platform for other international student volunteers to know each other and to start other collaborations like all of the offices in the universities. I know ASTEN consists of the senior members, prominent members of each university. And now is the time for the youth, the younger generation to take part in this collaboration. So I, I do hope um, this event, this summit could be the first of many. And of course, thank you so much, Dr. Maria. Without, without that conversation, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that we could uh, have, have this. So I'm very happy to see um, participants from Malaysia, Vietnam, Taiwan, the Philippines, and also Indonesia. That's why in our first summit, we, we limited the participants no more than 60 because we're going to focus on the engagement of each student. We don't want yeah. to have 300, 400 webinar where the participant just sit there and listen. So by having 60 participants, we would like to hear from them tomorrow about their insights and share experience to, to create a better student volunteer program because experience is the best teacher, even if it's not from our experience. So by learning from other experience, like we have today from Dr. Maria, oh, I, le I learned a lot. For example, in Indonesia, in UPI, the alumni, yeah. in terms of the alumni, it's a good insight, very valuable insight that we have to treat the alumni still as part of the family. So thank you for that insight. And yeah, from, from my deepest heart, Maraming salamat po, Dr. Maria. It was a wonderful presentation and insights. And yeah, hopefully uh, you also enjoyed the summit. <laughs> and oh, yes. to all participants, please to make the best of this opportunity. And we hope, we do hope that this is the first of many others of your collaboration because this is your time, yeah? Uh, you cannot BD. make the future without the youth. <laughs> Thank yeah, you so yeah. much. Uh, can I ask something, uh, uh, just a uh, spark no, in my mind? Since uh, we are talking about uh, collaboration, uh, not only P between PNU and uh, UP, but of course under uh, Aston. Um, maybe this is a good project. Uh, uh, to be uh, initiated, uh, maybe we can establish uh, as ten volunteers, no, uh, from coming from you know coming from as ten members. Since uh, UP, PNU, uh, maybe UPSI, no, there's a volunteers organization or student ambassadors there, no. So maybe we can um, what create. Uh, Aston Volunteers uh, Organization. No? Yes. Within, of course, within Aston. Yeah. Precisely, Dr. Maria. So we will listen to what we have tomorrow. Yeah. Because here we have from UPSI, um, Bangsaan Malaysia, um, UIT, National University, and UIC. We'll see what, what they have to share. And then we will try to accommodate, but that is truly, uh, a, I think, a very good initiative. So not because not many universities aware about the importance of international student, student volunteers. This is yeah. this is the way. This is the first step toward that. So yeah. thank you for your advice. I do. Uh, oh yeah, Dr. Abu. I think Dr. Abu listened to the initiative. So sure, sure. 
we do hope we do hope that this dream will come true. But still, we need to wait from the from the GUSTA, the international student bodies. Okay, so to all the participants, um, the destiny, yeah, is in your hand. <laughs> okay, so uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. That is um something that I need to share as my. Uh, my my form of happiness and gratitude. I'm so grateful that to to start. Yeah. Obi. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, uh, Pak Didi and Dr. Aswan. And now we're going to have a Q&A session from the audience to uh, Dr. Aswan. But before that, once again, I'd like to remind all the participants to fill the attendance list which have been uh, shared in the uh, chat box. And uh, the question and answer session will uh, begin as usual if you would like to directly please don't hesitate to turn on the camera and unmute yourself. Please, someone. Mr. Moderator, there is a question from NKU Taiwan on the chat box. And from... Oh, yeah, now it's on the uh, chat box. It to me. Sent to the chat box from uh from Taiwan. Hello, Dr. Maria. I'm Lily Afghani from National Kimoy University, Taiwan. I have a question. Is there any program for international student in PNU who can join in that program and invite students from Asia, including from Taiwan? I interesting for make a cooperation between MOU Taiwan and also have another experience from PNU and I hope MOU Taiwan can visit PNU. Thank you, Dr. Maria. So please, Dr. Maria, uh, to state your response to the question. Okay. Uh, thank you. For, okay. Uh, Okay. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, yes, yes we can hear you, madam. Okay. Yes, can, yeah. So thank you for the... Yes, we can hear you. Um, actually, there is no, um, you know, uh, there is no... Uh, program, no? We're in the, the students coming from different universities will, you know, join this in this particular program. But in case that your student, no, are um, when they come to PNU as a, a student uh, part of the student mobility program like uh, studying English language proficiency or as a student exchange uh, uh, organizations uh, uh, program, ambassadors program or PNU involved. Uh, this is part of our, you know, uh, addressing the homesickness of uh, our uh, guests no, coming from different countries and of course to to ensure that they are safe no and they enjoy their experience while from no for that no but in in case that the student no uh went to uh or go to the pnu to uh as a student exchange this student exchange uh, students automatically uh, automatically join uh, PNU Info you know, to expose themselves to the culture, 
and of course PNU involve um, so that's it thank you slide for funds which is very important for us to bridge cooperation between universities and now we have a uh, audience that uh, raised her hand Ms. Asna to ask the question directly to Dr. Asua. Ms. Asna, please. Uh, so, uh, we have for an um, insightful presentation. So, my question will be how to build cooperation between the members of international student ambassadors. Thank you. Following the member here. Uh, can we, uh, there is a noise. I can I can add here clearly. Will you please uh, repeat the, the question because uh, I was not able to hear that clearly. Okay, sorry for the time. <laughs> Yeah, because there's uh, there is a noise. Uh, so, because uh, there is so a noise. So my question will be: yeah, because oh, there's a noise. Cooperation between the members of international students and the center. Mm. Okay. How to build a cooperation between the international um, ambassador, international as uh, international or PNU involved? with other universities? That's your question? Yes, just like your university who wants to, yeah, just like your university who wants to uh, like um, collaborate with uh, PNU involved. Well, um, I, uh, I am very much, as an advisor of PNU involved, no, I am very much uh, willing no, to collaborate no, with uh, other universities, no. Uh, in the participants, no, one of the participants um, is the the president of PNU involved uh, to grow, no, and to expose. So uh, to connect with you know other uh, universities outside the Philippines. So it is very, you know, uh, it, the the idea is very much welcome uh, to. Um, in order to, to, to collaborate, no, we need the, the memorandum of agreement first. No? So maybe you can write, um, you, uh, you can say that you are willing to collaborate with uh, PNU Info. So welcome, <laughs> very much. We are very much welcome. Because, uh, you know, this is an opportunity for the volunteers, the volunteers from the Philippines, but also uh, your volunteers in your university. Thank you very much, Dr. Aswan, and thank you very much for uh, Ms. Hasna, which is, uh, we look forward to have a cooperation with our uh, universities as well. But of course, just like what has been explained before, it is important to have an agreement basis for that collaboration, which we really look forward to. And also there is a, from Dr. Hafiz, from uh, UKM to address the floor, please. Mr. Mr. Hafiz. Okay, thank you. This is kind of like a kind of stop. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. We can hear. You can hear me, yeah? We All right. can hear you. Uh, this is kind of like, wow. As all of a sudden, my name came out here. <laughs> all right. Um, thank you, guys everyone here and thank you for giving this platform an opportunity to share uh, you know um, what do you call that our practice of global UKM global bodies uh, in university 
bangsa okay. Malaysia. So we have around actually this global body students they um they are parked under me. I have roughly probably about like 56 of these students under me, and they they are from a deep different disciplines. As what uh Miss Maria said that you know this is more like a volunteer uh yes. work for the students, but of course. Uh, on our part, it's not only they provide uh, giving us like a volunteer work, but we also offering them exposure uh, at the same time because we need to appreciate them as a global bodies because they are assisting us in many ways. And um, one, a few examples that I can uh, probably share with you is that um, I usually engage them with um, our embassies people. Uh, they'll be involved with our promotional uh, events during educations and also during our conferences they will participate and we will train them and I usually have um, a training schedule for them like every year at least once in the beginning of the year or middle of the year where we will train them to become uh, a, what you call that um, uh, more informed global bodies because since they need to attend to all our exchanges, uh, they will be. They have to know. Um, they have to know some some we do so that they they can uh, come together on board to assist us. And um, other than that, too, we organize like events that. Um, activities uh, usually the min minimum is about seven activities per semester so each activities i will assign them uh, and then they will have to do posters for the for the activities and um, they are the one in charge and they have a few few uh, what you call the committees that will run the activities such activities is more like um, edu educational visit, like to Kuala Lumpur, to Putrajaya, or to to other um, interesting like tourist uh, places around the country. So we provide that kind of uh, activities for our exchanges. So any of you guys who comes here, even if you are not, if you are not a global bodies. If you want to come to uh, to our university campus, these these are the some of the ac activities that we will offer to you guys. All right, um, I can share more of this uh, in tomorrow. Uh, I will let some of the other observers here to uh, to share their you know their experience and. Uh, what they want to share with our with everyone here participants, what they do uh, for their global bodies. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think if you have any questions, please for me, uh, you oh. can either send emails to me or just put in the chat box and I will answer them. Okay, thank you. Nice meeting you guys. Have a fun, 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 fun uh, activities here, okay? Nice All to right. see you too. Thank you very much, Mr. Harpis, for your address. And really look forward to You're welcome. to have further communication with you in another uh, occasion. And yeah. uh, I believe that the question from Ms. Hasna is the last question for this uh, session. And I'd like to once again thank Dr. Aswan for uh, the responses and for the presentation uh, presented to our program today, which is very important and uh, beneficial for us, the participants. And your uh, presentation on the management of the inform in your university is also helpful for us to learn on the management, on the volunteering, on the uh, programs itself, starting from selection, volunteering, and also on, on the detailed management of student activities and volunteers. So once again, thank you very much, Dr. Aswan. And now we are going to move to our third speaker.
And now we're going to move to our third speaker, Ms. Shirley Magdalena Tangkilisa, Account Director, Hill Norton Strategy, Hill Norton Strategy Strategies Indonesia, with the team of running virtual event for domestic and international students. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Mas Jalu. Yeah. Thank you, Mas Jalu, the moderator, for introducing myself. Um, hello, everyone. Again, uh, good morning. I think for some of um, the participants, it's been uh, known already. I think it's almost lunchtime, so I will just quick um, have a quick uh, insight and uh, sharing to all of us here. Um, let me just wait. share my presentation. Okay. There is always a time that you have prepared your your technicality, but technology sometimes make it uh, some kind of obstacles. Um, can I check? Everyone has already uh, seeing my um, slide now. Yes. yes okay. Okay. So uh, hello again, I'm Shirley Tengkilisan. I'm an account director of Hill and Knowlton Strategies Indonesia. What is us? Uh, I will tell uh, everyone later. But first of all, uh, let me just thank you for uh, the time and the opportunity for the Education University and all of uh, the participant, Bapa, Ibu, and uh, all the uh, fellow here. Um, this is such a grateful and such a pleasure for me to share because the topic of running event in the era of pandemic is such a hot topic in the industry, I'm sure. Uh, and we are, we are lucky that we've been uh, experiencing um, some case studies already until uh, December. I guess in Indonesia, it's been like uh, eight months yeah, since the first pandemic um, government regulation for stopping or for the social distancing um, regulations. So uh, let me just quick introduction. Uh, I am Shirley. I've been I've been living in 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 career or my professional life as a consultant. And basically, my basic uh, is PR, public relations that uh, now is evolving into the communications, not only PR, per se, um, for media relations, engagement, and all. No, we, we already uh, have, we have become the, the, the more strategic role, which, which is the communications. Um, Hill and Knowlton Strategies Indonesia is a corporate or marketing communications in Indonesia. We evolved from the boutique PR, which is FERF, back in uh, April, 1st April uh, this year. We were acquired uh, uh, by one of the largest um, and the oldest PR agency in, 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 in the global, in the world, which is Hill and Knowlton Strategies Indonesia. What is us? Um, we are, as I mentioned, we, we, we are one of the oldest in the industry. We are part of the uh, global agency network, one of the biggest, which is uh, WPP in Indonesia, it's Wira Pamungkas Pariwara. Um, we have uh, offices in in the global. We have global network uh, already, and we we are connected with our global uh, colleagues as well. So I heard from the first uh, speaker, uh, Prof Ahmad, and also Ibu uh, Dr Maria mentioned about the collaboration about being the student uh, ambassador, it's, it's also in us. We, we uh, entering the professional life uh, in the office, we also have one. Uh, we have the program, um, it's called the, I think it's also the ambassador, yeah. So we can, we can be seated in the Korean office or the Malaysian office or uh, in the Thailand or else, uh, somewhere else. Uh, by sitting there for about two weeks and vice versa. They also send the representative from the, uh, their office to be uh, sitting in Indonesia. But it happened only uh, before the pandemic era again. 
So I'm looking forward to also have one um, like that physically transferred maybe next year. Yeah, hopefully for all of us. Um, HNK, uh, as I mentioned, we are the communications uh, holistic um, agency, or we can say it's a consultant. Our uh, depth and breadth experience or the capabilities um, you can see here, it's, it's applied to all sectors. We are heavy in technology. We also have uh, health, energy, and et cetera. Uh, including also educations um, where where the communications have a bigger role in an important role to do anything any any story that we want to uh, or our clients wants to tell to their audience stakeholders as well and also our service as I mentioned we are not only uh, doing yeah we have we have media relations um, service uh, of course but more than that we want to uh, amplify again the story of our clients or whatever uh, with which party to create engagement to to influence them throughout our services you can see here uh, if we're talking about the event or uh, connecting with with the audience digitally uh, we and with we are and we touch the experiential sector and influencer engagement. Uh, Dr. Maria mentioned about the the uh, the important role of social media as well, and it's true. Uh, by now, we live in the digital era, of course. So, being or touching the digital um, KOL expert or the they 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 who are influential in digital it's so it's also important uh, csr i think it's not only the csr as we donate something but it's more than that uh, we also create the social impact or we can say the volunteering programs uh, ideation or the story that we want to uh, bring it to life uh, for our clients and one of it also the education um, organization organization but it's not in Indonesia I think it's in London or America okay uh, before touching to the technicality or or what is the the, the redesigning event in the in this in today's era I would like to share uh, one of the methodology that we believe that we we, we are living in uh, at this moment. Uh, it's about the three P communications. What is that? Uh, it's actually um, we combine the performance and the purpose of us, of the company, of the clients, of the institution to become the preference. So we are not longer um, just telling uh, our story, but we don't have impact or we don't create the relevance to our uh, our uh, stakeholders. Um, this is where uh, we can amplify the purpose itself into the larger uh, context, which is this one, uh, purpose driven storytelling approach in HNK. Um, this is our methodology. Yeah. So if we are going to run or conduct an event, uh, we are going to have an output, we are going to engage one uh, or others, we need to have a purpose on it. Why, why we need to do that? What is the reason? What is the legacy that we want to bring into the community, into the society, into that particular person? Uh, and that's our purpose. And uh, the cause, the cause is the is the way we create the story or the material or the content to create the relevance and to resonate to the society itself. So the purpose is in us, and the cause is the way we um, transfer or we um, we express we express it externally. Uh, and the story arcs is uh, more into the detail of each the each the uh, content that we want to bring it. 
um, for for some for case uh, we are supporting Disney uh, not the Disney as a brand um, but specifically it's a Disney uh, plus hotstar it's a applications it's a VOD application video on demand applications where we can uh, directly um, get the the movies uh, in there yeah I I hope you are familiar with the applications. It's com, uh, it's a complete uh, competitor of Netflix. So um, the purpose of them, but when they are launching their their product in back in August, is to is to bring Indonesian or the global audience uh, the entertainment anywhere and anywhere and anytime because they are not. Uh, yeah, we can access them in in the TV, but by having our uh, device, we can get it. The entertainment uh, provided by the global brands Disney, and that's the that's the purpose they that they they bring and they provide for us. Um, I don't know, maybe as uh, maybe uh, here um, the participant here also familiar with the. Apple. Um, the purpose of Apple is to provide the innovation uh, technology. And what 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 do they say? Uh, it's about the creatively uh, saying, think different. Think different is about always uh, innovate, always being the pioneer in the industry. Yeah, that's some of the, um, the thing that I have as an example and from here by having the purpose by having the the content we want to bring it to the audience and we can say it throughout the many activities one of it uh, of course the event and virtual events nowadays are so challenging um yeah this is the the, the latest uh, time um cover yeah the uh, magazine which they they dominate they nominate uh, the Zoom owner the CEO of Zoom as becoming the man of the year of course. Um, uh, before I tell about the uh, how to how to create the event, I want to um, share the insight that. We are now living in the digital uh, era. Of course, we are. We are. We've been part of the digital communities, and what does what does this imply to us? Um, digital connect us. Uh, I'm. I'm just aware that we are not. Not all uh, the participant here in Indonesia, yeah, is from other countries as well. So thanks for digital. Um, and the technology to make it happen. Uh, I think um, government are still doing their homework to, to make the connectivity of us becoming um, accelerate. And we are looking forward to have the 5G connectivity in the, in the, in the future, yeah. Um, and by, by, by having this, the quarantine and the social distancing, uh, it has um, evol evol evolved us to always have connectivity in digital. Say it, um, not only social media, but we, we conduct meeting, we even um, touch our parents or our friends by doing this in digital. Um, and the event in spe in specific for event online online events has been um, on the rise. This is the data that I got from Eventbrite. Eventbrite is an event uh, platform. Yeah, they conduct event and inviting audience. Uh, before the pandemic, it's it's the offline events, but now they um, adapt to the new to the new normal they also provide the online events uh, invitations so we can see here the growth of the online events happening uh, nowadays and it's quite big and 
I think we are still um, um, foresee for more than this data. Mm. And now it's time to rethink and to create the refreshment for all of us in uh, engaging our audience, touching our friends or our buddies in the in the um, global or in the other countries by by having this conversation through the digital. How how can we how can we conduct it? And what is the impact? What is the, the KPI or the measurement? Is it success enough? Is today's event is success enough? And uh, what we set as a goal today uh, will be will be impacting uh, to our audience or not? It should be one of our uh, apa ya, the the thing that we need to also prepare uh, today. Yeah, yeah, it's time to reimagine the events towards an immersive digital experience. And these are some of the activities that we put and that we also have experience in doing this. Um, webinar is one of the uh, platform or the activities that bigger than the meeting, uh, obviously, but uh, webinar it needs to have an attribute um, that that we need to focus on. Um, we can see here's a niche topic. What is the content? What is the thing that we want to uh, share to our audience? Because because either a webinar uh, and the press conference or meetings, uh, we have the invitation like by day. I think it's more than three or four invitation we can get it. So for the audience, uh, we or the students when that we need we, that we want to engage, they need to think what is the most interesting topic for me. Is it this webinar? Is it this event or others? Then that's the that's the uh, uh, topic we need to make sure it's interesting enough for them and please don't make it more uh, like uh, more than <laughs> uh, it should be 30 or 45 for one for a spokesperson but it depends uh, it's uh, for my experience doing webinar or press conference it should be not longer than one and a half uh, hours and in, it's including the Q&A sessions as well. Mind your body language, of course, and don't start spamming your registration, uh, registration registrator from, from the starting point. Don't make, please make it the user journey or the user experience starting from the invitation um, has been distributed. It's easy, it's user-friendly and for the spokesperson or for the uh, the committee, please don't use too many slides because it's the digital the, in the digital era. Our time span is so low, yeah. In focus on one topic, um, podcast. Um, I'm sure we've been uh, also familiar with this uh, platform. It's on demand. Um, before the before the pandemic era, I only uh, listened to I think three or four podcast um, account or profile. But now, but now I can see more than that. I can relate to so podcast uh, with the audio um, story, storytelling that we can create through audio platform. It's also useful for us to share our content uh, because it's easy to learn and to listen and to get what the topic uh, has been um, communicate uh, and it can also uh, distribute across all channels not only for the podcast itself we can create the youtube uh, series out of the podcast um, and also the social media uh, amplification and keep it tight don't ignore your audience and please don't be rigid on the topic you can always um, explore and you can always do something um, entertaining or can be more life yeah 
uh, online product launches is only only the context of us uh, in HNK, but uh, of course for the industry like university or uh, students related uh, event, it can be more than a product launch. It can it can be uh, event that create in launch. So this attribute should also uh, relevant for all of us here. And press conference or meeting where we want to uh, share our story and impact to our stakeholders uh, per se is a media. And don't forget to manage the logistic. I'm sure the committee uh, of today's event has uh, has set this uh, attribute yeah, to manage all the logistic. Um, next one is, oh, OK. Um, let me share our experience in at in at in HNK. Before the pandemic era, we we are not we we didn't have uh, this this uh, platform, the podcast. We know it's impactful, but we don't we didn't focus on this yet. But uh, after we see, we can um, the audience in Indonesia can hear what the global uh, or or our HN, uh, HNK headquarters want to say, uh, then they create this platform, not only by, by saying the HNK uh, related content or own content, but we also create the industry related topic um, um, about the sustainability, about the technology, about the innovation. So this is the, the useful uh, platform as well. Um, for those who are in the, um, in the level of, um, you, just, you just want to uh, create or conduct the event, this, uh, hopefully this uh, will help you. Uh, this is the platform. I'm not familiar with all the platform, but we have um, tried some of it, the podcast uh, platform and also the video conferencing. Every, every each of the platform has their own feature. They uh, they have their own um, uh, plus uh, plus point, and also they have the minus point. So uh, just try and uh, see. Which, which platform that is more relevant and that is more useful for your audience or your um, activities. And next one, um, in summary that I can share here about how to redesign our event uh, at this moment in the era of pandemic or the next normal, um, what is your content? Before we create all of the activities, we need to sit down yourself or the committee or your friends. What is the content that we want to create? Uh, and what do you want to communicate? How do you want to communicate? What is the, um, the gesture that you want to make them um, feel, felt? Is it entertaining? Is it educating? Is it rigid topic? Or is it? It should be something that is uh, more millennials or young, young youth, uh, youthful. And be agile and spark your creativity. I heard before this, before um, the material of I think Prof Ahmad yeah, uh, talk about the creativity. And yes, it's it's true. We need to also to this context. Let's create because the digital era brings us the opportunity that we have now. We can create, we can trial and error, we can mold uh, one event, one activities to another. Uh, but again, make sure the, the, the impact should be there, yeah. And also uh, follow the health protocol of um, what, go, what our government or local government said. Uh, I don't know in, in Bandung or in East Java, uh, the, what is the protocol, but here in Jakarta or in Tangerang, we have the PSBB can. So we need to also put it in mind how to create that because 
although it's digital, but we have the team that needs to create the studio, needs to create the the background and everything. So uh, and in the studio need to follow this. Yeah, um, maybe I can share here. Um, we've been we've been um, lucky to to be able to adapt this event uh, um, to even in digital uh, so i have a client that uh, back in march and april they still needs to jualan they they need they need to sell their products as a flagship product uh, the technology so um be the plan was that we need to create at least we, we need to conduct at least three or four events offline happened in uh, five star hotels but then um we need to then we have we have to have the plan b we need to have the scenario what if the uh, the offline event cannot be done which is true so we we um we went to the plan b which is all happened in digital uh, but the studio are still uh were still set in the uh, hotel so we limit what we've done at that time we could we provide the sanitizer we provide the uh, rapid test but then now uh i need to be swap at least antigen swap not not a uh, rapid test anymore and then we also uh, limit the people or the participant that attend the the offline um, setup uh, that's the thing that we also need to make sure but let's be agile let's be, let's adapt and uh, make sure we follow the regulations maybe it will be different in the next uh, month or the next week please be updated adapt to the new digital tools uh, i shared some of it but i think uh, we have more than that um, so please please try to explore and adapt learn on the digital tools or the platform uh, this this word uh, the next one is the collaboration i heard this um, keywords uh, for a few times before, Ms. from the Prof. Ahmad and Dr. Maria uh, said before, it's about the collaboration um, to making sure what we do is impactful. We need to also make sure we create and we collaborate with the right parties. Um, I think we we all have limitation, but we but with collaborate with others, we can create something greater. And for the context of running event, please don't stop in one channel only. We can create the story, we can create the activities and provide them through uh, omni channels, uh, say the, the uh, social media, the uh, blog, the email, and the speakership. Um, so many things we can create after, after the activities. So don't limit your creativity, please um, create and explore. Um, next one is all about our case study, I think. Um, put down my earphone. Um, so this is the case study that we have in HNK, where I mostly being part of it, part of the preparation and all. Uh, first one is about the what I mentioned earlier, Disney Hotstar. I think let's let's watch the movie and I will talk uh, about this after the the video. Saya 
kasih Vinogi Bastian. Terima kasih sudah bergabung di Disney Plus Hotstar Grand Fest. Kepar Indonesia. I'm Kevin Feige, President of Marvel Studios, Chief Creative Officer of Marvel. We have something extremely special prepared for you this evening. Oh my god, I think I lost the connectivity ya. Yeah. Am I still here? Yeah. You are. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you Wi-Fi. Okay, uh, please allow me just to share my experience, our experience by uh, when we conduct this um, launch of um, Disney Hot Disney Plus Hotstar. So actually, it's a consumer event back in uh, August, and that's that's the the era of the early uh, the early era of we conduct event digital. Or virtual, and our team was uh, our team were connected with their uh, the clients team in Australia to make to make the stage of Gamaliel the make uh, the to make the stage of Rosa uh, being frozen ambience and Lion King ambience, and it's not easy. I mean, it, it wasn't easy because we shoot the the material here in Indonesia is a local production, but then we need to send the big files to the Australian guy. Yeah, based in Sydney, and the, and we need to create the three D dimension uh, ambience that you just uh, you just saw in uh, our um, this one. So we create the VR, the technology, high technology, um, and we collaborate with others uh, with countries that in Singapore, in Australia, and we then familiar with the connectivity that we need to have a big uh, size of download. And yeah, it And this we collaborate with the um, uh, animator, illustrator as well. We managed to have the the production outside the studio, but with the limitation of uh, participant. And this one the, is the behind the scene. I just want to share this uh, quick. This is all the green screen uh, material that we create. We collaborate with the production house and the uh, vendor to making sure the these things happened. We follow the health protocoler as I mentioned. Yes, this is the raw material you saw the the previous one, and it's live. This is the the thing that the consumers saw. And others. Uh, Sorry to interrupt, ma'am. Yes. Uh, your remaining time is ten minutes. Okay. Sure. Sure. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. After this, uh, it's all only about the case study, uh, where the impactful uh, event can can be can be done. Uh, as I mentioned, also we don't stop only in doing the the offline event or the 
the launch itself, but we also amplify the story through the social media, whether it's the Disney Disney so own social media, uh, and also the KOLs and also the consumers. Then we create the the impact um, activities, yeah, impactful activities. Um, other than this need, uh, this is the Telkomsel, uh, one of our clients in HNK. Uh, what we what we brought to the clients that uh, this is the very first event in the history of uh, Telkomsel. They create the event uh, virtual uh, when they when they conduct media relations event. So we need to, although it's Telkomsel, one of the biggest provider in Indonesia, they need to learn how to create everything, how to making uh, our story out there by doing it digital. Uh, next one is Samsung. Samsung uh, is a flagship uh, technology. What I want to share here is that one story can can um, can be amplified by ourselves by uh, our, our own uh, material but also it but then it can also am, be amplified by others that attend your event that that create the organic impression out of our our events i want i just want to share this uh, quickly is um, no I need to have the audio yeah this is the event that we adapt the next normal e um, event. So we still conduct the event in, in the hotel. Only few participants coming. And this is the this the this is the video that made by the tech reviewer. So it's coming from them who attend our event. This is not us, but the story uh of our uh, event is being organically um, okay. They they were impressed by by the logistic, by the the one that the thing we manage it uh, healthy and hygiene. Yeah, still hygiene. It's all uh, uploaded in uh, YouTube, so you can just go to the profile. This is uh, Shegario, one of the tech reviewer. This is beyond our, I think this one is same. Beyond our- uh, Okay, hello semua, apa kabar? This is the event. Um, this is beyond our expectation, yeah, because we just want to make sure everything goes, everything went well, uh, and we still can uh, say our story, but the impact is beyond <laughs> beyond that. So thank you. Let's be agile, let's be creative to making sure uh, our creativity is there. And this is the, the look of the consumer. Mulan, should I uh, say or <laughs> just quick? Yeah, Mulan is also one of the movies in Disney. I think it's still live in the application. And the, this one is in the studio and the right one, uh, right ones are the screen that people can see. And we managed to have this studio, the big studio uh, that located in the Ritz Carlton in Jakarta. And it's not that easy, but we managed to have the sequence of events running very well. This is the look. <laughs> Behind the camera is all always ups and down. And we create the uh, media tour. So having the the relations with media nowadays, we we need to also create the uh, we need to also uh, engage with their social media 
uh, platform. So this is it. Uh, we we provide the Yura, the singers, the dubbers of uh, Mulan to have the interviews happen in media, social media. Media, social media. Yes, that's true. And other than our work is study in HNK. This is just the reference. I, uh, I don't know uh, already uh, aware of this or not, but this is the the way government, our government, our organization uh, has been adapting to the next normal as well. Museum, we love museum, but we cannot go there. So um, the museum, Indonesia, yeah. The organization of museum in Indonesia uh, provide this virtual tour using the 360 um, experience um, to the audience that cannot visit. Uh, I think that's it from my side. Uh, hopefully, I provide you some experience of the of being creative or of being um, how to create the story impactful. And yes, uh, and provide you also the knowledge of the platform that is available for doing this uh, in digital. This is just the other clients that we've been engaging with. I think that's it from my side. Um, any questions, any um, feedback, uh, please. How to conduct this, uh, Bapak Moderator? Thank you very much, uh, ma'am, for your presentation, which brings us brand new information how to conduct and connect us in this pandemic time. And of course, there will be uh, questions from our audience for their curiosity on uh, how to uh, have this conducted. We, we have uh, one Raise one uh, participants who would like to directly ask the questions to you. So please unmute yourself and uh, directly ask to the uh, speaker, please. Hello, Miss uh, Shirley. Hello. Um, first of all, thanks for your interesting talk. Um, my name is Yasmin and I'm from Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia. And I'd like to ask about how to minimize the chaos of the virtual events in this pandemic era, since we know uh, the committees cannot gather in the same place to arrange the virtual event. Also, what are things that we should check in advance? Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Yasmin. I think I lost your video, but that's okay. Uh, the chaos, <laughs> the chaotic, we need to expect there, yeah, because uh, having the event in digital is not, it's beyond our capacity. Uh, because at, like the one that I mentioned about Disney, uh, we need to have at least two, pro, two I, we need to have at least two, two providers to provide the connectivity, one from Telkomsel, I think, and one from others. Um, so we need, to, we need to expect there by having the experience expectation uh, there will be the chaotic uh, or the chaos <laughs> when we are running the event we, then it brings us um, the, sec, the the plan a plan b uh, make it make sure the plan should be uh, well organized before uh, create the is that committee yeah? uh, the the deficient the uh, the division that should be the PIC for for having this uh, event. Um, so when we when we conduct event, we need to have at least the creative uh, PIC, the studio that dealing with all the technicality. We, uh, me and myself, uh, handling the content. What is the speaker should tell. Uh, and also we need to have the talent, talent like the one that be that been um, communicating with me as a spokesperson today. So we need to make sure those divisions uh, know what is their responsibility, what, need, what, what are the things they need to making sure before 
the event life uh, by I think that's one of the 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 uh, the thing that we need to ensure before beforehand uh, to uh, I think oh okay uh, please make sure we conduct rehearsal we conduct briefing e before event um, yeah rehearsal uh, rehearsal have a important role whether it's a small event is a bigger scale event we need to have that please make sure your uh, your spokespersons knows uh, and the divisions that i mentioned before know um, the rehearsal time and commit their time to um, to attend that rehearsal uh, in indonesia we sometimes we use gladiaresik yeah atau uh, dry uh, yeah rehearsal event before uh, yasmin and please uh, also uh, have plan b and what if scenario in our mind it helps a lot when something knock knock uh, happening um, for for me uh, when we have event uh, i also rely to the ability of the moderator or the mc to create the conversation to making sure the conversation are still uh, engaging when something happen like blackout uh, when the uh, apa, the connectivity is unstable thing like uh, i answer the questions uh, yasmin Uh, thank you very much, ma'am, for uh, the response, and I believe uh, that is uh, really give insights for the for Miss Yasmin herself. And uh, of course, it is important for us to uh, minim to uh, minimize chaos in the event for uh, this, uh, and even in the time of pandemic, it is much harder to interact uh, to one another directly. And uh, once again, I would like to thank uh, Miss Shirley Tangkilisan for your insightful and amazing. Uh, presentation for uh, today, which explained to us the H and K surface uh, to uh, the audience itself, which uh, brings uh, new information how to conduct a virtual events. Because I believe that pandemic is not the limit, is not border, it's not the limiting border for us to connect to one another in uh, so many fruitful programs. And uh, the presentation from uh, Ms. Tangkilisan concluded our uh, program for the speakers and. Uh, I'd like uh, to ask you to join us to give a big round of applause to the three speakers, Ms. Dr. Muslim from uh, UPI, Dr. Aswan from PNU, and Ms. Shirley Tangkilisan from Hill Norton Strategies Indonesia. Thank you very much for your uh, presentations in this program. And now we'd like to present our token of appreciation, which will be presented by the chief executive of this summit. Please. Thank you very much, uh, Jalu, as the moderator of today's event. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, first of all, I would like to, on behalf of the organizing committee and also Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia, I would like to once again express my sincere gratitude to all the speakers. So allow me to present virtually each certificate to each speaker. First off, I would like to present a certificate of appreciation to one of our very own, Bapak Ahmad Bukhari Muslim PhD. Thank you so much for your contribution and presentation. Let's give a big round of applause once again to the speaker. And second, the certificate is presented to Dr. Maria Elvira Aswan. Thank you so much for your significant contribution. I believe that you've shared valuable information to the, to the participants. So once again, let's give a big round of applause to Dr. Maria Elf. And last but definitely not the least, I would like to present the certificate of appreciation to Shirley Magdalena Tangkilisan. That was such a, a very interesting um, presentation. You know, the, the, the event of the Disney collaboration between Indonesia and Australia really caught my attention. So yeah, thank you so much once again and give it up for Shirley Magdalena.
Thank you, Lisanne. I really hope that um, the collaboration doesn't end here. I really hope that this is just the beginning of collaboration among international um, st student bodies in Southeast Asia. So thank you so much. And allow me to hand it over to, is it to the moderator or to the MC? To the moderator, Jalu. Thank you very much, sir, for uh, the presentation of Certificate of Appreciation. Ladies and gentlemen, the presentation session of our program in day first, in day one, had been concluded. And now I would like to hand over this program back to the master of ceremony. Salma, please. Okay, thank you very much, Jalu. Once again, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Abdullah, and also the, to the all amazing speakers. Once again, everyone, please, please give a big applause to our speakers. Now, I would like to invite some of the participants to deliver their impression on our first day of summit. I would like to invite Harini Mani, Mani Marum. Could you please give us your impression as a participants of International Student Bodies Virtual Summit 2020? To Marini? To Harini, pardon me. Can you hear me? Hi. Yes, yes. Hi, everyone. I'm sorry, I couldn't open my camera. My camera is facing some problems. I hope everyone can hear me clearly. Um, I'm Harini Manimaran uh, from University of Pendidikan Sultan Idris, Malaysia. Uh, based on my opinion, I think this summit, but this summit is uh, one of the uh, interesting and best events that I went through. Uh, I get to learn a lot of knowledge and especially uh, from Shirley, Ms. Shirley, and then Dr. Maria, and then just also Dr. Muslim. You all shared a very good, great uh, information to all of us. So yeah, I think that's all from me. Thank you. Dolphin. Dolphin picture. Uh, sorry, unstable connection. All right, can you repeat? Um... Can you please the your impression on our first day of the International Student Body Spiritual Summit 2020? All right, greetings everyone. I'm Palvin from uh, UPSI Malaysia. Um. It was very interesting topics that had been discussed in this um, uh, seminar. And especially the last session, I, I got so many, like um, a whole new different perspective. Yeah, so thank you to the speaker. That's all from me. Okay, thank you so much, Talfin. And last but not least, I would like also invite one of the participants from uh, Vietnam National University of Ho Chi Minh City. Is there any participants uh, from uh, VNU HCM to deliver the impression? We don't have any. Okay, everyone, once again, thank you so much to all the participants for the impression. Once again, Give a big applause to our participants. Okay, before we come to the... We have Nur Azam from University of Sultan Idris, second. Alfat Eka from Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia. Third, Nico John Samson from Philippines Normal University. Fourth, Mutiara Shaharani Putri from Telkom University. Fifth, Lord Elfin Zamora from University of the Immaculate Conception.
And sixth, Ariesta Mutmaina from Universitas Ahmad Dahlan. Seventh, Monita Juli Julistalia from Universitas Syiah Kuala. Eight, Muhammad Amirul Shafiq bin, bin Muhammad Aznan from University Technology Mara Shah Alam. Ninth, Nguyen Thi Tutui from U Vietnam National University Ho Chi Minh City, University of Social Science and Humanities. Tenth, Afghan Lili from National Kwemo University. And last but not least, a representative from University Kebangsaan, Malaysia. Okay, we are also going to share the list of the groups for the breakout rooms uh, session tomorrow on the chat box and the WhatsApp group. Once again, before we end our today's program, I would like to invite the participants from University of Immaculate Conception. Is there any participant who would like to give an impression from University of Immaculate Conception? Yes, there is. Okay, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Hi, I am Joel Agustin Rosso, and I am from the University of the Immaculate Conception. First of all, we would like to thank the UPI, especially the heading organization committee for this organization towards uh, having this opportunity to augment such an amazing organization to allow students to have a particular aspect with regards to making advocacy and, and, and especially to make an organization for the students to have such uh, objectives with regards to making um, contribution to accepting culture diversity, accepting the beauty of diversity. So in line with the objective of, their, of this organization, I truly, uh, I am truly, I, I, we are truly thankful in behalf of the UIC delegates that uh, we are very thankful to be here and we are also, uh, uh, it's also nice to, to see uh, uh, um, speakers uh, from, different, from different countries, specifically in ASEAN countries, that they are uh, giving us the knowledge and expanding our horizons with regards to the objectives of this organization. And so is, we are the students, we are the delegates, we are proud to say that uh, we are one of uh, we are now uh, an ambassador for this organization and um, I, I can I can just say I, I can I can say thank you enough but yeah this is a great opportunity in behalf of UIC thank you so much okay thank you so much Joel and once again I would like to invite uh, the participants from the Philippine Normal University is there any participants from uh, Philippine Normal University who would like to give the impression of our summit. Yes. May I share my sentiments about the summit? I'm Hilary Ladesma from Philippine Normal University, a member of PNU Involved. And I'd like to share my takeaways from the three sessions that we conducted uh, today. Um, from the first speaker, I what really took my attention is the um, quotation about student ambassadors really matter and I believe it's all thanks to those who support us student ambassadors and volunteers because you empower us to see our potential and um, become the volunteers that we are today and also for the second speaker our very own Dr. Asuan thank you for reminding us that you can be a volunteer in your own ways because you presented us you presented to us very clearly the division of work and how we can contribute to the work of of an organization and become a volunteer that can share their own um, expertise thank you and for the last one to Miss Shirley, thank you for sharing that uh, we can be very flexible in our own way, especially now that we are in the middle of a pandemic. Um, overall, I'd really like to thank um, the. I'd really like to take this opportunity to thank all the organizations behind this event, and it's uh, like what Mr. Jowell said. Um, I share the same sentiment that it is a great opportunity for everyone. Thank you. 
All right, thank you, Sarah. Thank you very much, Hillary. Now, everyone, I would like to remind you again to don't forget to uh, fill the attendance link that we have shared in our chat box. And also don't forget to follow our Instagram at dia underscores up. Also visit our website at www.oyer.up.edu. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now we have come to the end of today's agenda. But don't worry, because we're still going to have another interesting agenda tomorrow. So thank you very much to everyone for attending today's agenda. Once again, please give it applause for all of us. I'm Salma Hanifa Yusrizal as your Master of Ceremony signing off. Hope to see you again tomorrow. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Goodbye, everyone. Hope to see you again tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. See you tomorrow.